some good looking Jimmy, you're cracking out one there. of those one of those brand new ones i am yeah is... oh. oh wait Other, uh, j-rod 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 yes oh yeah j-rod got two jimmies tonight fresh yep. from the uh, brewery didn't even get a chance to warm up in the car oh uh, <laughs> what is it like a 10 minute drive 15 minute drive uh depending on the day it's, it's usually like 50 minutes um 50? i work i work yeah i work uh, near okay. it though so from work it's like 10. nice so, but i should have had a house. road soda just kidding don't do that yeah. <laughs> cheers you guys cheers cheers, cheers. excuse my dirty glass Mm. This is actually really good. I'm not a beer drinker, but I'm loving it. Yeah. All right. You're also, not? Arizona, sh- Arizona Wilderness, what a great brewery. Oh, aren't they, though? I was over there today. They, uh, I was over there with Jonathan, and he showed me all around, and uh, we had a really great time. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Those guys make some awesome beer in Arizona. That's awesome. Yeah, I've, too. I've heard of them. That's the nice, one brewery I, I know of. Back. Yep. Jonathan's a great photographer too. We need to get him on that. You need to get him on the show as well. Oh, wow. Is it, who is he? Is he like a brewer there or the owner or? Yeah, he's the co-owner and okay. uh, brewer. And he's also um, an Arizona wilderness photographer, does a lot of work in with Arizona highways with me as well. Um, That's awesome. Does, wow. does absolutely fabulous work and an all around great guy. <laughs> hmm. I have no uh, idea. Local, yeah. Are you local to Arizona? Yeah, I'm right here in Scottsdale, Arizona. So I was awesome. over at the brewery today before I came back home. Awesome. Guy here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy, you can't tell from her accent that she lives in Arizona. <laughs> nope. I'm terrible oh, with accents. Unless it's very, very apparent. <laughs> no, I was just joking. Uh... <laughs> Is there an Arizona accent? I, I don't think so. There's not very many people who are local to or native to Arizona. Yeah. There's getting more as the longer I've been here. But uh, yeah, usually everybody's from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry about that. I thought I muted. <laughs> Where did go? Yeah. It took off. Yeah. He's done. Ditched. He's like a man. Can't handle heat. Yeah. He's had all he could stand in me. Just <laughs> <laughs> you totally abandoned us, man. Did you go take Wait, a picture? You guys can't can't talk to each other without me. You need me to no, lead no, the discussion. No, no. no, we need the host. Nice. Yeah, I was uh, snapping a photo for the untap check in because this is a new <laughs> one. Go. So this is uh, what it. makes us strong. Pretty cool can. Thought Suzanne might like this because she likes some wildlife. You know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've been so wildlife the last couple of months. Everybody's a bit worried about me. <laughs> living the wildlife oh. so uh this is um an east coast style double ipa so a hazy double ipa uh by fightens in collaboration with horace they're in oceanside california really good brewery jimmy knows all about horace um and this one has nelson mosaic and strata hops in it and it's 8.5 percent, and it's really good um <laughs> They poured a little bit darker than their usual IPAs, but uh, the flavor is really good. That's that horse influence, man. Which part of it? Probably just the color. Yeah, it's got a really nice, uh, punchy, punchy flavor to it. Slight bitterness, but very welcoming. So what, when they did that one, they did a an East Coast and then they did a West Coast variety as well. Um, mm-hmm. and my son was just drinking the, the West coast at dinner a few minutes ago. So, um, nice. And he just Sharon, turned Sharon beer with the sun now. Uh, he doesn't like it. So, um, <laughs> oh, more for you, yeah. but because you showed him, you showed him the right ones. Right. Yes. Wait, yeah. Is your son <laughs> a beer drinker? Uh, thankfully not that I'm aware of yet. <laughs> so, uh, well that's when you got to be um, careful the ones that you're yeah. not aware of you know the, the uh, secret drinking yeah yeah, yeah. I, if i feel well he's off at college most of the time so um, oh yeah he's definitely drinking at college <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my son my sons are coming into town uh well one of them's already here but i don't see him that often but anyway they're coming into town tomorrow and they're going to be very impressed that mom has a uh, fridge full of beer so they'll be happy Thanks, That's Bob. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, happy Mother's Day, Suzanne. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah well, happy Mother's you. Day. Yeah, we're going to have a Mama Palooza. It's my birthday coming up as well. So, 
Mama yeah. Palooza. Mama nice. Palooza. Nice. Happy early birthday. <laughs> Thank you. So what did you bring to drink, Suzanne? So, if I'm allowed to say, <laughs> it's called Don't F It Up. And that's from um, <laughs> the uh, Arizona Wilderness Brewery. But like I said, I have two more. So, you know, as, as we go along. Oh, stop he's going to beat the Hans Strawn record. Some of you already know Arizona Wilderness, but uh, they've got a great philosophy over there. Everything is locally grown, um, re- really into composite, uh, you know, uh, Compositing everything and co- what am I trying to say? Co- comp- Collaboration, composting. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, we forget a lot so of words on this show. Yeah, it gets and worse. So what they try and, after the first yeah, hour. what they try and do is, uh, you know, their philosophy is drink like you care, and so they try and um, keep the water down, stop draining all the water from the Verde River here locally. Um, so they're working with farmers here. And they've changed over how they um, grow the crops. So instead of growing crops for summer crops, which obviously drains a lot of water from the Verde River, um, they've now switched over to winter spring crops. And they reckon that they can save about 50 gallons of water per pint of beer that they brew Um, over there. Nice. Um, And they're really, really into Yeah, Jonathan Buford is the guy that uh, I deal with over there. Uh, aside from being a great photographer, he's a great um, proponent of conservation. Um, That's awesome. And every, everything they do there at the brewery is is 100% locally locally grown, locally farmed. Um, you know, making sure that they take everything back, and you know, they just they just do a really good job. Plus, it's an incredibly buzzing place on a Friday afternoon. I'll tell you. <laughs> I can imagine. Their space is uh, their space is beautiful. It's really big. Yeah, it's great. So they got a space yeah. there in Gilbert, uh, which is you know a real little hub in our area, and another one um, in Phoenix now too. So nice. I got a I got a wonderful tour of the whole place, and it's, it's just a great vibe over there. Super people. So our buddy Jimmy, that's here tonight, is uh, a great photographer, but he's also a brewer at Humble Sea Brewing. There we go. Um. So he makes beer. And uh, have you guys ever done a collaboration with Arizona? Uh, no, I've done a collaboration in Arizona. We've done a collaboration. But not with Arizona with, Wilderness? Not with Arizona Wilderness. We've done oh, a collaboration. Should, yeah, we should do that. That sounds like Yeah. Fun. Yeah. So get Jonathan on here. Yeah, yeah do you Jonathan think Jonathan awesome. would actually yeah. come on the show? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. He's awesome. That'd be awesome. You got to put us in touch then because that, that's yeah, like definitely. another perfect guest. Cause... Oh, yeah. He'd be absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. That's cool. That's cool that they're, that they're trying so this, to minimize this, this the I, I don't F it up is because uh, I have to I have to tell you what it is, right? It's a blonde ale mm. right, with wildflower honey. And actually the honey that they have um, api- apiists, honey people. Mm. OK, yeah, yeah. honey people <laughs> here locally in Arizona. Um, and then it's Sonoran white wheat from uh, the farms here in Arizona. 5.5 ABV, um, and it's awfully tasty. <laughs> nice. That sounds great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love yeah, using we'll, honey uh, beer. If we get Jonathan on the show, we'll convince him and Jimmy to do a collaboration between their two breweries, and they can make a beer called Brews and Views. Brews and Views, absolutely. <laughs> there you perfect. go. I think they should do that. Yep. That'd, That'd be, be awesome. uh, one one customer. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ew. what are you drinking j-rod um this is a uh, brand new also from fightens um this one's called accessory pigment um just picked it up today they just really not be drinking today. my can um uh, <laughs> i think i see your name on it <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry uh you wouldn't like it it's terrible uh, it's like mouthwash um but uh yeah so it's it's a combination of nelson and wamea if I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah, um, pretty close. Waimea, Waimea, same, same thing. Waimea. Both from New Zealand. Um, it was 8.7 ABV, um, double IPA. Um, but it's uh, it's really not, it's definitely different than some of the other ones that they've been doing. 
um, in a good way. You know, it's just has a more, um, a little bit sweeter, a little bit more melon like. Mm. Um, it's a little bit of like a some pear in there, but it's pretty, it's pretty green though. So it'll be interesting to see how Eric's cans are tasting in a few weeks. <laughs> yeah, that one's sounding good because of the hop profile. I love Nelson, obviously, mm. and then Waimea hops have always been good whenever I've had them. Yeah, it smells great too. What are you drinking, Jimmy? Uh, I am drinking a beer called Look Good that we brewed. It's a Vienna lager. Uh, nice, crispy. Don't mind my glass. It's pretty dirty. And it's like super light. Uh, 5.2%. Nice and malty. Your it's camera looks dirty too or something. You got like a little like uh, glam mm-hmm. effect going on there. You know, a little Orton effect, like a little, little glowy haze yeah. on the skin. Edge. Yeah, I just have the light coming in, you know, a little side light. There you go. Yep. <laughs> nice. I haven't had any Humble Sea. Well, maybe I've had like one lager that you sent me. I'll put some in your box. The box that uh, you keep talking about that never makes its way to UPS somehow? He right sends here. them to me. So. <laughs> yeah. We actually go to New York and then back across the state, back to you. Yep. <laughs> yeah what what jimmy takes what he wants and then i get the leftovers it's pretty much yep, it, exactly yeah. yeah throw in a couple paps so <laughs> hey jimmy, man, PBR, sounds... pbrs hit the spot every so often they do never you guys sounds like you guys do a variety of stuff there at humble c yeah we do we do everything you just have that one one main location or yeah, we I talked mean, we about have... this on his episode, man. I feel yeah, like yeah. it's deja vu right now. There's a problem with these old guys on the show. They never remember anything. Uh, one, Senior moment. Point five, point five beers in. Yeah. <laughs> we can do uh we can do a brewery update on the next time we do one with Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be sweet. We seriously gotta hook that up. Yep. Uh, so Melina, what do you got? So I'm uh, it's the first hot day of the year, so I'm gonna go with the Pilsner. From you feel like your taste is, is back? It's back, yeah. So it hasn't improved. Nice. It's, back. it's back, baby. It's my last battle with COVID. Um, <laughs> but this is hitting the spots really good. It's 4.9 ABV um, and just light, tasty, very drinkable. And it's the first 90 degree day here. So it's like the perfect way to kick it off. It's also 4, what, 420 out yeah. here. So it's a little early for me to yeah. go up into like the 8.89 8, or 10 yeah. EPV. 420 is the perfect time to get loaded. Yeah, no. true enough. I, but, I started with a 3.8% at work. So yeah, kind of ease into ramp up. You yeah. Know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I have, a, I have a stout waiting in the wings. So mm-hmm. I knew you would. Yep. So, I'm Suzanne, like- thanks a lot for coming on the show. Um, oh, my pleasure. I feel like I've been invited to the, uh, the tree house in the. In the neighborhood, you know, with all the cool kids hang out. So this is great. I'm okay. glad you see it that way. I'm not sure everybody <laughs> does, but <laughs> more like a bunch of beer nerds. Let's see. Yeah, that's, that's okay. I like beer nerds too. <laughs> so uh, we don't have Paul here tonight because he's at a concert. So Bellino will be filling in and uh, he'll be making up for the breathing in the microphone and uh, the crazy comments and uh, digging around in his toolbox in the background, starting up the chainsaw. He'll be doing all that for us tonight to fill in for Paul. Well, he, could, yeah, he could enjoy it from the concert. I don't even know what concert you went to. Probably like oh, Smash Mouth. Say, something. which concert did he go to? I wasn't sure. Uh, <laughs> he said something. Maroon uh, 5. <laughs> Nickelback. Nickelback, Nickelback, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, Probably God. Nickelbacking right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, Suzanne, what's super funny is I was talking to Matt Payne uh, earlier this week because yeah. I could have sworn you did an interview with him and I was looking for your episode so I could listen to it and we wouldn't have like overlap on here and I wanted to like do some background research on you. And I was like, Matt, I'm looking for an episode. I can't find it anywhere. Can you send me a link? He's like, she's never come on the show. I've asked her several <laughs> times, but I can't get her on. And I was like, Matt, are you serious? I asked her once and she's coming on this weekend. Like no hesitation, yeah. no issue at all. Oh yeah. No, well, okay. Yeah. Now I'm going to be in big trouble, but I was on with, uh, <laughs> he uh, said you were some... on like an educational episode. Yeah. I was on with some guys you might've heard of Alex Noriega and some guy tal guy. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were doing, <laughs> we did a, a thing about teaching and workshops. And so it was a, yeah, but an individual one he's asked me and, 
as as uh, as soon as he sent me the paperwork on, you know, what did I want to talk about and what did I think was important, I freaked out and realized that I had nothing to say that was important. So <laughs> <laughs> we we had, we had to actually get together. So that's funny. That that's a good uh, that's a good cover up. But I know it's because yeah. we're just way cooler than Matt and. Uh, you don't want to be on his, true, true. his stuffy you know, I podcast. Start, I wanted to start at the very top. <laughs> you know? For sure. Yeah. Well, keep, keep playing hard to get. Here. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Get... Yeah, hard to get. Where's so, the paperwork to fill out for these episodes? How many kids do you have, Suzanne? I have two sons and five grandchildren and one great-grandchild. Wow. Wow. So, but your yeah. your Facebook says you're single. I am. I okay. have been most of my life. Just the occasional dalliance for the children. But <laughs> okay. uh, <laughs> yeah, most of the time I'm single. Yeah. So single grandma, great grandma, super cool. Oh, God. Awesome yeah, grandma. Don't say that. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but um I'm sure they all think you're super cool with how much you travel and seeing your photos and everything. Yeah, actually, I think I'm doing all right as far as that's concerned. My uh, uh, my oldest granddaughter is uh, taking photography now in um, her junior high, high school. So I'm really thrilled awesome. about that. Yeah. Plus, I you know she's eyeing all my leftover camera equipment too. So, but that's <laughs> great. It's I, it's just wonderful. I'm just really thrilled about that. That's, that's super cool. cool. Yep. So when you're traveling and stuff, are you usually just by yourself or do you have friends that are photographers too? Or No, I don't have any friends, Eric. You know, nobody likes me. <laughs> no, I have. Yeah, no, I have some friends. Um, and I do like, I actually love traveling with other photographers. And, you know, we usually go out and, you know, we do our own thing and then we get back together later. And, you know, so it's a, it's a, it's a, um, a nice combination of being alone and being together with people, meeting around the campfire later and uh, swapping stories and all that good stuff. So I do like traveling with other photographers. They are kind of fun. Nice. Sometimes they're fun. Most of the time they're fun. <laughs> Depends who. Yeah. I was just wondering if you like travel by yourself and if your kids worry oh, about yeah, you at definitely. all. Or... Yeah. I mean, I'll definitely go off alone. You know, I have no problem doing that. Um, as I say, most of the time, you know, if I wasn't traveling with my kids and once the kids grew up and, you know, had their own lives, I was traveling by myself. So, um, yeah, I'll go off and I'll take off and go to Grand Canyon, White Sands, Moab, Big Sur, you know, up to yep. Oregon, up to Olympic Peninsula. Um, yeah, if the, if the mood strikes me, I'm gone. Okay. <laughs> And it seems like you've been doing photography for a while. I've been following you for years now, and I could tell you had already been doing it long before then. Um, and I probably started seriously uh, about 2010. I guess that's a long okay. time now, but you know, yeah. not really long in the big scheme of things. Um, I'd always played around with the camera and always enjoyed photography. My dad dabbled in photography so you know kind of came from there but i didn't know what i was doing i was just pointing a camera at stuff and you know put you know just hitting the shutter button and hoping for the best but i didn't really know what i was doing but it really that sounds like my still, approach yeah still you know and it works so well um but you know i spent a lot of time as i say a single mom with with two boys and we were doing a lot of camping and fishing and hiking and backpacking and all that's good stuff so when the boys grew up and you know went about their their own ways i really didn't have anybody to go play with anymore mm. and uh then i found photographers and photography again so uh that sort of became what i really wanted to do and you know i really kind of found my people there so that was nice. 2010 um i did a workshop actually with uh, arizona highways um and then realized that that's definitely what i wanted to do uh, met some people there that were going on a colorado river trip down the grand canyon the following year so i said yep you're you're my people i want to go with you and so i decided that i would do that trip and then quit my job and that's exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's so yeah a that, dream, that's, that's a dream right there 
Yeah. Yeah. That so brings I up, did that, uh, quit my job. All what was your job? I was an insurance underwriter for Lloyd's of London. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Not very so interesting. I thought it might be something. No, nothing I would see at all. Completely the other opposite end, you know, completely different. Was that uh, kind of draining for you or was it kind of nice to have a job that was, was like completely separate? It was absolutely wonderful while I was raising boys and putting them through expensive colleges and doing all that good stuff because I made a ridiculous amount of money. Um, but once that wasn't necessary anymore, it was draining. Yes, because it really wasn't what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do was sit in the desert and watch the sunrise, you know, um, and at that time then, because the boys were gone and I knew they were in good hands, so I was basically by myself and I could do what I wanted to do and decided I better do what I want to do now before it's too late. <laughs> and uh, I always had the thought that, well, worst case scenario, I can always go back to work. You know, they'll, right. they'll take me back. But yeah, that job will that always be there. <laughs> Yeah, I was. For, I forgot that I was getting old, and I was making too much money, and they didn't want me back. So <laughs> at that point, I had to like make it work or else. So so far, so good. Every every day that goes by, I just oh, I'm making it another day. You know, so making it work. Good. Yeah, making it well, work. I have a lot of respect for you because uh, I know how difficult it can be to be a single parent, especially a, a single mom. So uh, that's really awesome that you were able to raise your kids and also find time to, you know, uh, pursue your own dreams and become such a great photographer and that's well admired and respected in the field. So that's really Thank awesome. You. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. That's the only compliment I'll give you tonight. So. Okay. That's it. That's <laughs> I, 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 only need, I only need one. I just can't <laughs> help my friend. That's it. <laughs> Can you talk about Arizona highways? Sure. So Arizona Highways, is, uh, as you guys probably well know, is a world famous magazine uh, that's been around. It originally was a magazine to um, talk about and, and explore Arizona, literally, roads and highways. <laughs> but it's grown over the years, um, obviously. And Ansel Adams and a few other, you know, well-known people have contributed to Arizona Highways over the years. And it's now become, um, you know, one of the greatest landscape uh, photography magazines that there is. Uh, and I'm very, very fortunate to work with them and have my work published there. So it is like a landscape photography magazine, like yeah, specifically? Yeah. Arizona, obviously based in, you know, Arizona and uh, and. and so yeah, they they um, explore all the various areas of Arizona and have photographers from all over the state and don't have to necessarily live in the state, but photograph in the state. And each month they come out with the most beautiful magazines. And we do uh, obviously the monthly magazine and calendars and engagement calendars and various other things and books. And yeah, so it's a real privilege to work with them. Awesome. Yeah, I've seen that you've gotten a couple of covers. Yeah, just a few. Yeah, oh, the one was like a, a snowy, snowy Grand Canyon image. That yeah, was pretty that cool. Yeah, that was probably that was like my the latest first. One. Yeah, oh, okay. that was my yeah that that single tree out there at uh, yeah that was my first cover for Arizona Highways, the December issue, and uh, I had one subsequently the following year um, from the same week shoot actually. Um, I have never in my life played hooky from school, from uh, work, except that one weekend when it was the most <laughs> epic snowstorm ever, um, and I got two covers out of that, um, which also convinced me that maybe I should probably not be working and I should be taking photographs. But I've been fortunate to have um, a few covers after that, um, represented in the calendars quite often, and... Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a real privilege. They're very good at supporting photographers, which a lot of magazines. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. So they pay for features and all that stuff? They do pay and they pay nicely and they're very supportive for photographers. That's cool. That's I've seen uh, it seems like it's pretty prestigious as well, like kind of a kind of a big deal. You know, if you get your work featured in there, um, like they don't just select anybody. People. So. Yeah. Yeah, I see people get pretty excited when their images get featured in yeah. there and it seems absolutely. 
yeah, when my yeah my first when my first was in there, I was very excited, and each and every time you know something comes up, and I'm in the in the inside pages, double truck or a cover, uh, or the uh, calendars, I'm always thrilled. Yeah, it's a real privilege. That's really interesting that it went from like documenting roads and highways. Yeah, to, roads uh, and highways. Yeah, yeah. To kind of a landscape. travel magazine. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. They probably just got like a lot of response from readers like, oh, we want, you know, we love these photos, this and that. So I just focused on that more. Yeah, I have a good collection of images from way back. You know, it's just a wonderful collection of images and uh, photographers over the years. Do you have a feel for how long they've been around? I should know that right off the top of my head. And I don't. But no, I don't. Would imagine Cut that hard out. <laughs> yeah, no, I would imagine it's been, I mean, it's obviously decades, but. Yeah. I, I mean, at least 80. Yeah. 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 A long time. If not more than that, yeah. yeah. Trying to think of anything else that's been around that long. At least here National in the U.S. Graphic, but. <laughs> yeah. So you've been in Arizona for a while now, but where are you from originally? I was Born and raised in England. Um, so we lived there until uh, the late 60s. My dad was an aircraft designer and uh, came over with what they call the British brain drain. Um, we, and we went from a tiny little village in rural England and landed in El Segundo Boulevard in uh, L.A., um, wondering what the hell we'd done. <laughs> but... Uh, but anyway, we adapted quite quickly, um, uh, and we ended up uh, living in Manhattan Beach, right on the Strand back then. So that was really good. While I was a teenager, that was a lot of fun. my uh, my dad grew up in Manhattan Beach. Oh, did he really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So yeah, Manhattan Beach was a lot of fun back then, um, but it really was a culture shock uh, coming all the way across. You know, as I say, as you can imagine, yeah, from uh, small just leaving village everything to, uh, behind. Uh, yeah. And then, um, you know, long story short, my, my dad uh, was still working with the aircraft industry, but then the bottom fell out of the aircraft industry in the United States. So they ended up becoming artists. Um, you just sort of out of the blue becoming an artist. But my dad was a, a metal sculptor and uh, my mama was a fiber artist. So they could kind of combine their talents. Wow. Um, and did some pretty neat work, and they ended up opening up a art gallery at uh, Cannery Row in Monterey. Oh, wow. um, so oh, that yeah, was a right lot of fun. The, so I right spent I spent a lot of my time in Monterey Carmel growing up too. It was lovely, Big yeah. Sur. Yeah. Big Sur, yep. Yeah, that's where my love of Big Sur came from. Was uh, mm -hmm. living there all those years, which was wonderful. Yeah, and we yeah, complain about. Uh, yeah trying to make a living from photography. I can't imagine trying to make a living from metal sculpting or something like uh, that. You know? Yeah, I know. Right. And it, it's Where funny you when, you grow, when you're growing up in it, you don't realize what your parents are going through. But now looking back on it, I realize you know, it must have been horrendous. A, moving all the way from England to the United States. And then, you know, saying, hell with corporate life, I'm going to be an artist, you know? Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. So they and back then, like without social media, like without any way to share your work besides like physically, yeah. it'd be so hard to create an audience and get any kind of support yeah. and just get yeah. off the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. As I say, looking back on it, I realized what a, an incredible accomplishment that was. But you had that creative background all those years ago. Yeah. Luckily enough. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like they did well enough to give you the courage to pursue it yourself. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think the lack of fear, you know, not fear, I have no fear of change, you know, I'm all, I'm all good for that. Yeah, some parents can like really uh, scare their kids from trying anything, you know, and they really want them to just pursue those like pre-planned pathways in life, you know, go to college, get a degree for this specific job and then do that job for the rest of your life because it's supposedly secure and all that. And then that can just totally stifle any kind of like creativity or experimentation or yeah. You know, really discovering who you are because you just don't get to try very many things. Yeah, very true. And I've I've tried to instill that with my kids too. Do your kids do anything in the arts? Well, they're 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 very artistic, but in a very different way. Um, my oldest son is a um, a landscape designer, um, mm. but uses it, 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 
incredible talent to design uh, high-end landscape stuff mm -hmm. and, you know, utilizes... Like people's yards or like business yeah. buildings or... Yeah, yeah, sort of, yeah, yards, yards, but gar great big spacious gardens and mm -hmm. various other things. And, That's cool. Um, you know, does all the CAD designing for that, um, which is amazing. And then my other son is a molecular biologist, but he's also very creative and is a oh. very good photographer as well when he has the time for it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so hopefully they awesome. picked up a little bit of that from me too. So a few years ago, sure I did. stopped... I stopped telling people that I'm a landscape photographer and started saying I'm a nature photographer because some people would think like I'm going oh. out and taking pictures of like people's yards oh, or like landscape. hotel yeah. properties. Right. And, yeah. I thought that's like what you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He has some epic, uh, some people had some epic backyards with mountains in it. I'd, pro so. I'd yeah. probably make more money if that is what I did. Yeah. <laughs> so. Rolling with the clients. I feel like Adam Gibbs did horticulture stuff for a while yeah he was photographing gardens for like a garden yeah. magazine right david right. cobb did that too yeah. david right. cobb that was yeah. yeah that's his claim to fame so how did you pick up a camera like what was your like i know you took that one workshop through arizona highways but before that you probably before, had some design on becoming a photographer yeah. like what was like the spark of the catalyst for your my my dad and i know that's cliche everybody says that you know good old dad yeah. but uh i so said my dad was an engineer and uh, a designer but his like you know way to explore things and be art i mean he was very artistic as well as an incredible drawer um but he enjoyed photography and being a a, a british man he um it was sort of our way to maybe communicate a little bit because, you know, I could say, Oh, I, you know, I like photography and I like a camera and I like, you know, this, and I'm interested in what you're doing. And that was kind of the way we, you know, forged a relationship. Um, yeah. Cause even though the medium uh, is distinct, you still have similar yeah, feelings yeah. and uh, so motivations. I got, and... I got his leftover cameras. And as I say, I just used to point at things and just click the shutter and not knowing really what I was doing. Um, I understood how to compose and I understood composition in the frame, but I didn't understand really the technical side of photography at all. You know, I didn't understand depth of field or apertures or exposures or anything. Um, what are so what are those I, words? I've never heard no, of that. No, I, that yeah, was depth of, depth of yeah. what? That's like tech yeah. stuff. Am I supposed to be doing that? No, I, I would take pictures wow, and I would like them. The whole time. And, <laughs> yeah. and I'd enjoy them, but I didn't really know. I mean, occasionally I'd get something that was good and I would like, yay, you know, that's great. But I didn't know how I got there. And it really wasn't, like I said, until uh, my kids grew up and uh, left home that I really decided I wanted to dedicate myself to learning the craft. And cool. that's where I went from there. Very cool. Do your kids like to go camping with you or anything like that? Yeah. Or they well, do? They that's used awesome. To. They don't anymore because <laughs> they're busy. Mm. But yeah, no, we spent a lot of time camping and hiking and fishing. And yeah, uh, it was those good times. That's Definitely nice. Good time. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing like taking your kids camping or hiking and just like yeah. being able to see their amazement. Like, even though you've been to a place so many times, like being able to yeah. kind of vicariously experience it through them. And when they really have like a special experience, like that's that's just really uh, yeah. special I mean, to just, see them. That's just what we did every every Friday night when I got off work. We, you know, the car was already halfway packed up. And uh, we'd just jump in the in the car and off off we'd go and we'd just camp for the weekend and then come back and you know that was just our life and really enjoyed it and they enjoy it and they still do you know they you know their lives are busy now but they they both still like camping and fishing and hiking around so I'm really happy for that. That's awesome. That's great. I think uh, just from that alone, it sounds like you did a good job as a parent if they enjoy those things. Yeah. Well, we'll see. They, as I say, they're coming into town tomorrow, so we'll, we'll see, see what they say. <laughs> so are, they, are, they, are they nearby? Are they close by? Uh, yeah, or? one one is local, and okay. the other one lives in San Diego. So. Okay, cool. San Diego. Okay, cool. Oh, not I'm too from far, San Diego. Oh, are you? Uh, so yeah, they're uh, in um, uh, Poway. Oh yeah, so I'm I'm from Vista. It's about okay. fifth, 
about 30 minutes uh, north of Poway on the yeah. 15th. Oh, great. Yeah. They have some horse property out there. So they're busy with rodeos and ballets and work and all the other good stuff. So busy. Life. How it gets, uh, gets really hot. I remember it was always like 15, 20 degrees hotter than it was in Vista. And it's still not like this in Arizona. So I love True. it. I, I go out there and they, there's a, I've got mother-in-law quarters out in the back and, uh, I just open up all the windows and the breeze comes up in the evening and oh, I just love it. Love staying out there. What's the highest temperature you've seen in Arizona? Uh, 130. Did you do the thing where like you, you cook an egg or like cook cookies oh, on the sidewalk? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one time I got an assignment from Arizona Highways to go and do a um, environmental portrait of a uh, a guy that had been working down at the uh, bottom of the Grand Canyon at Phantom Ranch. Um, and they needed somebody to go hike there and take a few environmental portraits and come back up. But it was the end of July. Okay. So, so oh, we'll send Suzanne. She'll go. <laughs> so, yeah. So that was about the hottest because by the time I got, because at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, it's uh, approximately the same temperature as it is in Phoenix. And it was about 125 in the shade. So I'm guessing oh it God. would be a good 130 yeah. degrees. Yeah. That's yeah. unreal. Yeah. So it was it was toasty. Yeah, yeah. I've never been happier to get back up the other side <laughs> of the canyon. <laughs> i tell you. Yeah. What's that hike like in terms of mileage and descent, yeah. elevation, and back up? It's it's tougher than it looks. Uh, I, I must imagine. admit, yeah, I was I was calling out for mommy on the way back up. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I was thinking about doing a rim to rim at some point, like yeah. next year. Yeah, I, I'm glad I did lottery. it when I did. I don't think that I would try and attempt it again. Um, yeah, those those days I think are behind me now. <laughs> but yeah, that like first elevation change, like the elevation change is like pretty dramatic, right? Because you're just like yeah. scaling along the cliff. Yeah. Just going straight down. Yep. Yeah. And then going back up. Just say, seems... The problem is it gets hotter as you go down. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yep. Um, and the best ways to go down the canyon are on the Sakai Bab Trail, which has no shade and no water. So Super exposed and dry. Cool. And yeah. it would probably have been all right had I not been a photographer because I would have just gotten down there. And you'd have 20 pounds less yeah, gear. Yeah, 20 pounds yeah. of camera gear. Plus, I was stopping every five minutes to take these amazing photographs of the gorgeous sunrise and uh, where I was planning on being down at the Phantom Ranch by 10 o'clock, I was down there by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, it wasn't my brightest move, but I had some amazing photographs. <laughs> Just off by five hours or so. Yeah. yeah. Midday. I, I always yeah. think about that Pretty because good. like everything we do – automatically entails 20 pounds of gear like that's pretty much you yeah. know tripod a couple lenses camera yeah. it's, it's, it's about yeah. 20 pounds of extra gear so like everything we do has 20 pounds on top of whatever you need so like a few weeks and ago that, that damn water stuff that weighs so much you know yeah, yeah a few weeks ago i hiked down like from this canyon rim into a slot canyon it was like 14 miles round trip but i had my camera gear there was nowhere to filter water so i had to take like three full Nalgene bottles, uh, like 48 ounce bottles, which is like probably five or six pounds each. And then some snacks and stuff. And I had like a 40 pound backpack on it. was like, I was going backpacking. And... Yeah. yeah, I know. It's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Why do we do quick that? Never... Trip. I don't even bother with like the lightweight stuff because it's just impossible if you're a photographer. So yeah. At that you're point, shave like, like five pounds and yeah. yeah. Right. You can't nickel and diamond. You get used to it though. I, I tell you what, if I go hiking now without, um, you know, my gear, you feel like you're gear, flying. I guess I just put it down. I just feel like a little wood nymph flying. I know, the and I'm like, this is this is how normal people hike. This is the easiest <laughs> yeah, thing in the world. Yeah. Exactly. There's nothing, and they complain. Yeah. So Mike and I can't relate to this. There's just <laughs> water freaking everywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't have to worry about it. 
I will, should we uh, start looking at some photos? You selected some really nice stuff to share tonight, Suzanne. Uh, I knew you would, but uh, yeah, you didn't disappoint. I I just, to be honest with you, what what I do with Instagram is anytime anything sort of just really catches my fancy, I just, you know, take a quick snap of it and I keep it in a little album, my inspiration album. So when it came time to uh, look for some images, I already had some. Oftentimes it's stuff that you guys have already seen already or you people that you're familiar with so i was hoping that uh here that at least i got some things that may be a little bit new to you as well yeah most of these were new I names this. i mean as i'm scrolling through you know when i see something that just it gobsmacked me um right. and this was definitely one of those ones that did that that's wild yes yeah, so yeah. this is by demi ray or all do you know where where this is or I don't. Um, uh, kind of looks like maybe the title, maybe the title of this image is Green Heart, which I loved. I, I didn't even catch the fact that it was almost a heart shape yeah, at first, yeah, but I just loved it. And then, of course, I you know go on to their website or go onto their Instagram feed and see a million other images that I love equally as much. But this one really, really caught my eye. I just loved it. It's so hard for me to catch anything that's on a slope. So I think yeah. it's like pretty, uh, really, really nice. That's like this is sloped, and then just have that straight kind of like curve to the trees. Yeah, yeah, that, that sense of motion, like it has a yeah. definite sense of motion. It was like yeah. dance. Yeah. And then again, yeah. Like, yeah. And even like the color, Maybe like a Michael Jackson move, like on the tippy toes, like arms up. Yeah. Bit, yeah. In the top right, there's like that one vertical tree, but behind it is this like other tree, which is kind of swirling back to the left, and it's also kind of mm-hmm. like a background dancer, like it's. I don't know. Yeah. I'm kind of going there with this image. Super cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His yeah, definitely whole, has a lot his of... whole Instagram feed is just um, amazing images. It's not just the woodland stuff, which he does yeah. quite a bit of, which is good. But he's got some amazing, just really unusual. Each one of the images is, is completely different to the one next to it, oh. which uh, I like, you know. Yeah, yeah good like variety, like diversity. Different things. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, his feed, I just really, really loved it. Yeah, when he shared the um this image you can he also has a video of like when he captured it on his camera oh, and oh uh, i gotta find that i didn't see that but when he pans around like what's around him it's just loaded with yeah. other interesting <laughs> trees oh my gosh oh, and and this one this one stands out but i it would have been a a, a field day uh out there just all these yeah. really interesting where did you find the video on the web page on this web page? Yeah, when it's you look through Instagram feed. Yeah, on this Instagram oh, feed. I just saw it. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah, just uh swipe left. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I like the, it's like a the carousel with this image. So yeah, I yeah. This yeah. I like the I like the peppering of green in the foreground. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Really, really nice. Just like nicely balanced and not it's like everything has like its spot. And there's not too much like convergence in one. It's like yeah. nicely spread out everywhere. Yeah, no, and it just okay. like leads you all the way to the back as well with that like one spot of green straight in the center that's yeah. covered by fog. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this is the sort of image that you could live with on your wall for a long, long time and just sort of get lost in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The energy of the lines is really pretty amazing. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Nice to see a new name as well. So what's funny is uh, when you first sent these through, they didn't have names or anything, so I didn't know who they were by. And I thought this was by David Southern because he's got all that great uh, mm-hmm. sandstone stuff, which we featured a lot. But I was pleased to see that it was a different photographer, Ross Brown. Yep. So he calls this one Strata. Um, oh. <laughs> nice. um, but there's, I'm, I'm not really quite sure where, the, where this one was taken, but it does remind me a lot of Western Beach and in Big Sur, they have this beautiful, um, you know, rocks and beautiful colors that come through there. Yeah, this Strata's is this pretty is really nice. Strata's a great name for this uh, podcast. Yeah. Strata's a, Strata's a pretty uh, good hop for beers. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That is a good one. Strawberry notes. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I love the, uh, the really defined, like, S curve in the middle from where it... Um, yeah, that indentation. And then also just the blue and yellow colors are really great here. 
And, and the, on uh, his feed, he's got a lot of um, other ones that are somewhat similar. Um, but then he's got a lot of uh, woodland stuff, too, that's just amazing. But just each one of his images, I could have picked five or six from here easily or more. It's so hard to pick uh, one image for this show. It, it is. And every oh, time yeah. I pick one, because I've saved it, you know, because that's my inspiration image. I see it and I save it. Then I go on to their uh, Instagram feed and it's like, oh, well, geez, damn, there's like 20 more that I just love as well. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm always going yeah. back and forth on stuff. Yeah, it's great to uh, discover these wonderful artists. Yeah, I really uh, I really enjoy the 3D effect of that, like yellow falling into the S curve. Yeah, and it just gives like this feeling of, you know, gravity kind of just yeah. like pulling at you and all that like stuff caramel or something just yeah. dripping down, you know and you got mm -hmm. those beautiful you know warm tones and cool tones together just oh. yeah we just really love this image and i like the while like it's you have the color separation i like that it's not super super contrasty mm -hmm. yeah. yeah soft light soft contrast yeah, yeah. Pretty good too nothing crazy. nothing forced here it's it's not yeah. pushed or anything the other thing is the edges, right? So where those lines those exit the frame are really carefully placed. Yeah. And that's something that people, when they compose, including myself, I struggle with that. I can admit to that. Yeah. It's yeah, really struggle with a lot of stuff. Yeah. I struggle shows. with everything, right? I'll just yeah, right out. <laughs> but if you look where you place yeah. it, it's so intentional. It's also, it just creates the flow. It's, it's a really yeah. important yeah. skill. to make. It's got all that complexity in the center and the edges yeah. are very yeah. Yeah. simple. Yeah. Uh, the edges yeah. are perfect. The the, the yep. leading line up to the top right is just amazing. Yeah. And yeah. Every mm -hmm. single line is just nicely. There's yeah. no tension. There's no like. Yeah. It's just dialed in. Yeah. Yeah. Any of the defined lines coming from the sides are like all super placed perfectly. Just like yeah. bottom mm -hmm. and then center and then top. Yep. Excellent. Great image. Yeah. There's parts of it that remind me of uh, like look when we when we image like the the clouds over Jupiter. You know, just especially yeah, like the, yeah, 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 yeah. the top half. I really feel like yes, yeah. I think Jimmy's feeling the beer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, Starting uh, that's to see stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, like it, it's it's like what else is it? You know, I mean, it's yeah, like, right. Yeah. Beautiful it definitely has a cosmic feel. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful yeah. feel to it. It's awesome. I had never heard of Ross Brown either, so I'm excited to go check their page out. Cool. Yeah, yeah you'll be amazed. There's some good stuff there. Never heard of this person either. I assume it's a woman. All right. So, well, Franca, actually, I went to, I met her in Antarctica. Um, Whoa. I, I went on a trip there with uh, Marcel Van Osten. And, no big deal. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. Just that, Antarctica, you know, of all places. Just ran into each a, other. Yeah. Was yeah. that a recent trip? And Frank, pardon me? Was that a recent trip? Uh, no, no, it was a while back. Um. And Franca was one of the um, uh, participants on the trip. And I always enjoyed watching her work. Um, and then over the years, I've, I've seen her post more and more stuff. And actually, when I went to um, you know, show one of her images, this wasn't necessarily the image that I was going to show. But I said, damn, Franca, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, okay. But she's got a wonderful portfolio of what her, she calls her small world gallery, where she does a lot of close-ups. And uh, the whole feed is just amazing. And she's just a really incredible photographer. And every time she posts something, I'm always just really impressed with what she does. The patterns and shapes of her intimate uh, images, um, and then her landscape stuff as well. But I just really enjoyed watching her work. Uh, she's very intense and very focused on what she wants to do. And uh, her work certainly shows it. The scenery and subject matter of this photo is really remarkable because as I look at yeah. this, I kind of start to uh, realize like more and more things and recognize different shapes and things like that. And um, so when I look at those two main trees in the center, the one on the right totally looks like it's like on its knees, like bowing yeah. and like kind of with its arms back, you know, like uh, yeah. kind of doing like a yoga pose or something. And then uh, the whole scene resembles like an eyeball with these trees in the center. Like yeah. Uh, yeah. the shape of the frame yeah. totally feels like an eye. Mm. And uh, 
yeah, it's just, this is, it just feels like another world. Like this doesn't feel yeah. like your ordinary yeah. landscape. I say, a lot of her, a lot of her work is intimate landscape and that's what I was going to feature. But then I saw this image and I went, Oh God, I really love that as well. So that's yeah, really metaphorical. Yeah, if, you, if you go out onto her Instagram feed, there's a lot of just amazing imagery out there. She does a, just an amazing job. Her. Every time she posts something, I get really excited to see what it is. It's pretty oh, cool. I am I, following her actually. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, she does some awesome work. Yeah. She's done a lot of aerial stuff recently too. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's right, got yeah, great yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it's pretty cool that the uh, the the opening in the in the foreground resembles the opening in the in the tree at the center as well. Yeah. So it's just kind of mm -hmm. a repeating pattern there. Yeah, kind of like yeah. a looping, like uh, those infinite images. Yeah, yeah that just keep yeah. on going. Yeah. What's it called? That like a fractal pattern or something oh, right. yeah and like she just got here like i don't know if this would have worked as well without the fog you know like the fog just covering the yeah. background and just like exactly gives you the whites gives you the white to the eyes like you said just like it's uh makes it's those trees pop yeah. yeah yeah looks like this one's from the fanal forest in madeira portugal yes oh, yeah yeah okay i want to hike across that island it looks like a cool place. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely uh, one of the backpacking spots for me, Madeira. So we know this guy. We featured him before, but this image, I actually, oh, okay. I didn't recognize. I don't, I don't remember seeing this photo, so I was glad you shared it because this is crazy. Like one of the coolest photos I've seen from Mark. Are you sure Mark shot this? Because Mark, I know. It says... <laughs> Mark Davis Photography, Winter Waterfall. Um, yeah, it looks like there's a mix yeah. of ice and falling water at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this just blew me away when I saw it. This is like another one that I could sit with it on my wall 10 feet high easily and just stare at it all day. Um, I'm sure yeah. that can be arranged. Yeah, <laughs> I bet it could. <laughs> Mike might have it on his wall already. Yeah. <laughs> I think he might sell it to you if you want to buy it. Yeah. What are you saying, Suzanne? He does a lot of woodland stuff as well. Um, and he's got some really interesting stuff out on his uh, Instagram feed. Just interesting. Oh, I think one of the ones that you um, maybe have seen before. Um, God, let me see. Enter the Dragon. Where? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was a really cool image. Yeah, he's got I remember that one. Yeah. This one's crazy, though. I don't even know where you found it because I really don't remember uh -huh. seeing this. I feel like I see all his posts on Instagram, but um, yeah, this yeah, one this slipped through. Kind of buried a little deeper in his feed, but uh, I found okay. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's kind of cool. Like the center is darker and the outside edges are yeah. brighter. You usually want the opposite yeah. to take effect. Where it, mm -hmm. it yeah, it's like a reverse vignette. A reverse vignette, yeah. but it also creates this really dreamlike, ethereal Yeah. yeah. Sense. So some people may want to darken it out, make it even, but like him leaving it as is or even brightening was is super effective. Yeah, yeah I think it's probably a very natural, Japanese, very Japanese feel to his it's comment on the on the, uh, on the post was he said he made a quick stop at this waterfall after shooting some wicked ass trees the other morning. <laughs> uh, I don't shoot waterfalls that often anymore, but I couldn't um, but I couldn't be in the neighborhood and not check out the ice conditions yeah. around this. Glad I this did. is uh yeah this one's pretty wicked yeah it's wicked awesome said the sun was yeah. just about to light up um wicked ass waterfall interesting combination yeah. yeah yeah that was super yeah i love yeah. that the only pop of color Crazy. in this photo is like just off center yeah and it's very ironic too because like this icy scene and yet there's green vegetation somehow yeah. Yeah. Right. there's like a yes. clash you know like a disharmony yeah yeah, very much so. Feels like a summer by those colors. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just love that. Yeah, you really know, cool. when you're scrolling through and you just stop suddenly. And this was yeah. one of my stop suddenly. <laughs> yeah. And I like the, it's not like super, super slow where the water loses its texture. Right. I really, really enjoy just like. Kind of matches the ice yeah. texture, which yeah, is kind of exactly. trippy. It like yeah. blends and in with can, the eyes. You can see a lot of depth all the way back too. You yeah. Know, you can, yeah. You can pick all the way back to the yeah. very far rocks there. Yeah. Just that sense of motion just is, just feels really, really nice. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. These have been great so far, Suzanne. You got some good taste. 
you never uh, know uh, when we have guests on what kind of stuff they're going to share you know if we're going to have to act excited or <laughs> try to not you know keep the vomit in our mouths but well you know i know you featured peter lick before so i had to eliminate <laughs> but, you know, we're all good the, the moonscape the moonscape's coming up yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> some aspen leaves with water on it oh, oh how good oh. this guy he's one of my favorites so i, I actually uh <laughs> i actually featured yeah. hengi kontjaro on okay. the last episode we recorded but I'm glad oh, you featured really? him again because more nice. people will probably watch this episode than that one because we have you on. Um, and I really love his work. And so I want him to get as much attention as possible. Beautiful. I've been following yeah. his work for a long, long time. And like I said, every time everything pops up from him, I am just know it's going to be great. And it's a little different, you know, than, yeah. than we usually see in our landscape yeah. world. Um, Absolutely. But absolutely every time i see an image of his it's just so inspiring and so moving and just you know so different i just absolutely love his work like what exactly is this well i don't know i think it's, <laughs> i think it's dunage it doesn't matter but, yeah it you doesn't know, matter yeah, like yeah or maybe say, a coastal but, scene like the curving yeah. of like a beach with some water yeah. reflecting some glare like really yeah. shallow depth of field and then yeah, yeah. right yeah Who that knows? doesn't give us a, okay yeah. let's see it um yeah i know he doesn't give us a clue on <laughs> on what it is but like i said it doesn't really matter but to right. me it's very it's very dunage it reminds me a lot of working in the in the dunes of death valley or you know in reality, he's yeah. captured a feeling here. It's not yeah. about anything yeah. physical. Yeah, exactly. It's the emotional and, realm entirely. Uh, and that's the exact word. Like when I think about his work, it's the emotional aspect. I think Suzanne, you use the same thing. And like, I highly recommend people go into not like his website or definitely his feed on Instagram because he has so yeah. many, yeah. just super engaging. Like, make you just stop and stare. Every time he posts, it's like a carousel of ten it's, images. Yeah. 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 It's exactly. crazy. He's, he's one of my and they're all, all insane photographers. He's insane. Yeah. And I don't particularly like it black and white work, but his work is just stellar, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I think it's all yeah. film too, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know I mean, if he shoots it, some digital now, but I know a lot of it at least was film. A lot of times, yeah. like in his description, he he'll, he'll state the, the film he used. Uh, yeah. One of the first people I, I followed on uh, Instagram, I just, his work always just caught my yeah. eye. Just so amazing. Yeah, I've been following him for a long time. I think TJ Thorne might have recommended him to me back when we used to be friends. Yeah. <laughs> he was just on, man. <laughs> yeah, he's he's incredible. He's he's a, he's a great in my eyes. Yeah, yeah. You just it, there's nobody else him. like him. No, no, no it's unique, uh, yeah. it's nothing else like him. Yeah, you, you just think about like how distracting the color would be from this image. You know, it yeah. totally totally works in monochrome. Well, these, these guys that work exclusively in black and white, they see in black and white. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they can envision everything in black and white already. That's that's how it works out for them. Otherwise, like they would probably keep the color every now and then, you know, but they're taking the photo predetermined that it's going to be black and white because that's how they visualize. Guys, which Unlike I just can't do myself. Takes a color photo and figures, oh, it doesn't look like it could, it could be any good. And then says, well, maybe I'll try black and white. And poof, okay, there we go. But, yeah, like an afterthought. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. But you know, people who, like you say, see in black and white and create in black and white like this, just oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, his stuff is phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, it's like hard for me to visualize anything in like black and white while I'm in the field. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Cool. <laughs> like I, yeah, that's why I'm not hanky. I kind of want to know what it like is, the... but like, I don't want to know at the same time. Like, I would love to just... Well, that's what makes it interesting. Like, you I can't know, help like... but be curious. But the I fact know, that you never figured it out... Mind yeah. wants to know and resolve the unknown, but, you know, yeah. it's just such a cool image as is. Yeah. Why, why can't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Abstract and there's just... Palpable. There's just no detail in the black either. You just can't yeah. tell. Yeah. Yeah, it's black. Yeah. It's probably the really inside cool. of washing like it, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I love the all GoPro stuff. inside the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sock. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one's this one's really cool. Just like it reminds me of a UFO. Reminds me of a UFO in the sky, just like 
looking down on Earth. All right, now this is getting weird. Yeah. I don't want Jimmy to start talking <laughs> about still aliens. Just seeing light and shadows on sand dunes to me, but you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, guys, go for it. <laughs> uh, that's a great pick. Oh, helmet's great. Too. Helmet's yeah, helmet's yeah. helmet's awesome. Yeah, we haven't had him on. We know who he is, but oh, okay. So isn't it funny though how we all just sort of gravitate to very similar images and similar artists? But yeah, I just um, I particularly like the softness and the gentleness of this image, and then went on to his feed, and then once again, you know, there's a million images I could have picked, but uh, I figured I'd just stick with this one and just enjoy the rest of them. Yeah. yeah and this one with like how intense that direct light is because that's like direct sunlight on snow i could see somebody else like really going heavy on the contrast and just totally ruining this but the fact that he like kept it soft in the shadows and the shadows aren't black or anything it has this really nice painterly effect it, yeah. it looks really cool yeah the light yeah. just kind of just trips over the top of those trees it's just yeah. gorgeous yeah. yeah and the subtle colors and the subtle palette yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and that transition from like the kind of like the right to the left we have like a little bit of that sun kiss on the right and then you just get that intense oh, yeah there's like a tiny bit of light in the bottom right corner on the tips yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. it's that little bit of orange yeah yeah and also yeah. just some defined that sunlit areas it's kind of that like a geometric shape that kind of triangular area it's really clean yeah Mm -hmm. So he wasn't battling like all these different like sunlit spots. It was really yeah. Geometry. Well, I like how it's like broken up too, though. It's not just like a very yeah. geometric, rigid triangle yeah, shape, true. which can feel yeah. very inorganic. It's like yeah. kind of scattered a little bit, you yeah. know. So it feels yeah. very organic. Yeah, like scatters yeah, towards off. the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure enough. Incredible detail all the way through the shadows yeah. too, but nothing overwhelms mm -hmm. anything else. Everything just flows so nicely together. Yeah. Yep. And just yeah. like uh, the photo, just it gets like broken up into like three distinct pieces too. You get like that line coming in from the right, going down into the corner, and then the line going up to the left top corner, and then you just get like that top right corner as well. Yeah, really, really like balanced. Mm -hmm. Wait, it's been the a... obvious. Yeah, <laughs> there's. <laughs> I was gonna say there's there's been a few images that we've uh, looked at over the you know, the past some odd episodes. So what are we up to? 23? 20... <laughs> I think this will be 24 when it comes out. 24, 25. Wow. wow. It's just how sometimes how ephemeral some of these images are, you know, like that just isn't going to last long once that sun really hits it, you know? Yeah. Just, the snow is melting yeah. with that intense sunlight. It's just is just, yeah, it's really amazing. Right place, right time. Yeah, some really special moments that have been captured in these photographs we've reviewed. Like you said, this could have been handled a lot heavier, too. And just the fact that he took a very gentle and mm -hmm. uh, easy touch with this just really made everything, you know, all the tiny little details in here just stand mm -hmm. out without being, you know, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, really nice. Uh, I miss winter already. <laughs> <laughs> that always happens. You never want to photograph the season that you're currently I know. in. Yeah, I, unless you it's know, fall. Sure. When it's we're, fall, we're, I'm, I'm stoked. I'm on. Photographers of that. You know, as soon as one season comes, we're all saying, oh, it's going to be fall. So it's going to be monsoon season. Oh, it's going to be winter. You know? <laughs> yeah. We just can't. We can't be happy. You know? <laughs> I know. I always say I'm going to do so much stuff in the winter. Then winter comes and I don't do shit. Yeah. And then, oh, it's too cold. <laughs> then I'm like, oh, spring's coming. I'm going to do this and this. And then it comes yeah. and I don't do shit. And then too many yeah. bugs. <laughs> yeah. Summer. Uh, that's the worst, but. <laughs> well, it is around here. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine. So there's another one that I mistook for a David Southern image. It's very David Southern-esque. But yeah, Tom Lowe. I'd never heard of him before. I'm excited to check out his work because this is a very nice scene. Yes, yeah, so he goes by F22 Digital on uh, Instagram. Yeah, sorry. Uh, actually, I do know who he is. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, one may never know his name. <laughs> I actually just started following him like a few weeks ago, and he's been doing some really yeah. nice stuff. He, he just posted a really nice really, sand one. Yeah, really, really interesting oh, yeah. stuff. I love his uh, infinite details. And once again, you know, I, I found this image, went out onto his feed and found a million more, you know. Mm -hmm. So... Oh, I 
always love that when you can see, you know, so much different work from one artist like this. It's just gorgeous. F-22. I thought Mark Metternich said you're not allowed to shoot at F-22. Uh, it's the rules. <laughs> oh, for true mast, master digital. F-5.6, focus stack all the way or nothing. Yeah, or it's dog shit. <laughs> yeah, <Yes>. pixel shift. <laughs> 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 Gotta do the pixel shift. Uh, HDR in every single frame. Uh, he's got some. He's got some really interesting images on his feed. Yeah, he has been putting out some nice stuff. Envious of his coastal imagery, you know. I feel yeah. like like Dave Southern, you know, is clearly by the coast at some in some capacity. But yeah, Tom's, Northumberland. Tom's feed is just loaded with really interesting takes on it all. Makes me want to go back out to Big Sur again. In a big hurry. Yeah, I hope when I say like a photographer's work reminds me of another great photographer's work they don't take it as like oh like it's redundant like derivative or like yeah. it's not like that at all it's just like uh yeah it's just uh it just adds to it all it's just a, yeah. a bigger right a bigger body of work to enjoy it's just yep. mm -hmm. he's, he's got yeah, such I a wide variety of scenes too from the coast it's not just this kind of like oh, yeah. slowly rock it's like a lot of like like light on ripples of of like sand so many diff different various images type image types from the coast so like it's not just david southern-esque yeah yeah, yeah. again kind of looking like jupiter although yeah <laughs> there he goes again with his uh <laughs> astrology he's in space <laughs> j rods in space I start talking about uh zodiac signs and <laughs> right i'm surprised he didn't Taurus. ask you what your zodiac sign is suzanne oh i'm a good old taurus i told you <laughs> taurus right here too <laughs> <laughs> but what does it mean <laughs> means i'm freaking awesome is what it means there you go there you go uh, that's pretty accurate then yeah, yeah that's definitely yeah. on the nail there we go yeah little, this feed is hovering hard. around the edges maybe so um something about this one you know the bottom right corner is like pretty out of focus and the top is slightly out of focus but he the reason i point that out is because it doesn't bother me at all yeah. And that's something that normally in my own photography, I would try to avoid with a scene like this. But in this case, it, it feels almost intentional because it doesn't detract from the scene at all. It's like uh, I, just softening the edges to suck you into the center even more. Yep. Yeah, I think that stone just kind of, you know, just centers the entire image. Having that slightly dark line around it too, it just, just makes your eye go there. Your eye just almost can't yeah. go anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it very captivating. It's a long time to get to the edges. And from like a, a, being a photographer, like, like to me, that feel like it's going to be handheld. Like it tells a broader story of yeah. his interaction with the landscape. Like if it wasn't handheld, maybe he would then take the time to get everything in focus. So you kind of get to see him roaming around with these different patterns and shapes and just kind of trying things out as a handheld image. And so if it doesn't distract, then leave it in. I think we're kind of moving beyond this whole idea of perfection just for perfection's yeah. sake. If it's an yeah. effective image, then it's an effective image. Agreed. Who needs a vignette? <laughs> yeah, it's nice. And I like how the blue is present. Like you can feel that coolness, but it's not yeah. oversaturated. It's, uh, it, he probably didn't even like add saturation at all. It looks like it looks very natural, yeah. but Pretty it has cool. that cool effect. Did you pour another beer, Bellino? Mm -hmm. What's up oh, with the I'm secret beers, man? It's a, it's a Introduce <laughs> us. All right. I didn't know we were going to do that. Um, yeah, Suzanne, you think, ready for number two? I think Jimmy yeah, is on a stout. He didn't really I talk about stout. Yeah. yeah. I have been drinking. It's not a stout. It's also a barley one. All right, beer break. All right, yeah, beer, right break. beer break. Should I go or not? Mm -hmm. go, 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 go. All right. So this is just a, a blind uh, grab from the store shelf today. Um, Bale Breaker is a brewery. I believe it's in Washington. Yeah, they're and awesome. A, they're yeah, awesome. hazy. Heard of them. I've liked their other brews. Um, Crop Circles, like the title can look yeah. cool um 6.5 abv so it's not gonna make me go too crazy um there's not much of a description of other things like hops or profiles but um so far it's really good it's a little dark for hazies in general that i like to have but um it still drinks really well it tastes really good so yeah i'm enjoying it Bail breakers. They are. They're located in uh, Yakima, Washington. Where that's what's uh, called Yakima. Yeah. Yeah. So a ton Yakima. of uh, a ton of hops get grown in Yakima. Yeah. So uh, they do a lot of like fresh hop beers, and I think they actually have their own hop farm on site. Do they bail so, breakers? 
Yeah, so they uh, they use all their own hops that they grow, so it's really, good really deal. cool. Yeah it's, yeah, it's a really good beer. Super solid. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll introduce the beer that I'm drinking. I am drinking Electric Roads from my good friend Brad at Private Press Brewing. Uh, he only does barrel-aged uh, spirit barrel-aged beer, so pretty much anything that's dark and every beer that he makes is either is over 10% ABV. Uh, Electric Roads is a double barrel aged blend of barley wine style ales. Ooh, barley wine. Yeah. Super raisiny, caramel forward. Very, very, uh, very, very nice. Not super thick, but very, very drinkable at a hefty 13.8%. <laughs> That's like wine, man. Here we go. About to see a different <laughs> side of Jimmy in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm not trying to hit the Bowman levels here. <laughs> There's what? a reason he's not here tonight. <laughs> I've got a bunch of stuff in front of me, but I decided to go with this one, which is Salome, which is a barrel-aged mixed culture saison. Saison. Very pretty close. Saison. 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 With Arizona Meyer lemons and pink peppercorns. Wow. That's awesome. So what kind of does it say the go. barrel type? What type of barrels is it aged in? Does it say? Well, he knows getting all technical, like he knows, yeah, he knows, knows something me. about so beer. beer. Uh, like a beer so here it beer. goes. Uh, Suzanne, if you have any questions, you can ask Jimmy. He yeah. he knows all about it's it. It's probably it's probably like a red wine barrel or like a it's a, a wine barrel of some some type. I imagine it's definitely a barrel because we talk because uh, my maiden name is Cooper, which is a barrel maker. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to talking about barrels so this definitely comes from a barrel <laughs> but that's all i know but i'll yeah, tell it's you probably from uh yeah you don't you don't normally see a lot of uh, mixed culture beers aged in uh spirit barrels and uh, oh, if, if it is yeah and that was in a can yeah i don't think i've ever seen a size on in a can before but that's cool and that's from arizona wilderness brewery hmm. sounds really interesting yeah it is. I love a good uh, yeah. saison. Yeah, nice and crispy, a little dryness. So, so tell me, what is a saison? Uh, a saison is kind of like a historical uh, type of beer that came out of like Europe. Uh, okay. I'm not particularly sure where it comes from exactly. Maybe, uh, maybe like France or Belgium, but um, France, tends France. to be kind of like lighter. Has a kind of almost floral kind of. Yeah floral sometimes it can be sour sometimes it doesn't have to be uh with this one particular one being mixed culture you get a lot of like i'm not sure like barnyard maybe a little bit kind of like musty some funk yeah a little bit of funk. <laughs> yeah. yeah this was from summer of 2024 um yeah yeah interesting yeah it but it's definitely uh definitely very drinkable uh, especially if they're not very sour Sometimes it can get pretty pretty sour. Yeah. Mm. Is there a difference between farmhouse and saison? Are they very similar? Uh, in... So like a saison can be farmhouse, but a farmhouse doesn't necessarily have to be saison. Okay. At the end of the day. It's like an umbrella um, Yeah, saison, saison. There's like specific saison yeasts as well, you okay. know, that produces saison. Nice. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm trying to. Hold it down for Bowman while he's not here. So I cocked up in a triple dry hop, triple IPA. And this is a threesome between Fidens, North Park, and Brujos. So it's brewed by Brujos in collaboration with those bunch two. Of, bunch of hype lords. Yeah. And uh, it's called Tris Magistus. So I'm not very good at Latin, but I think that's like three magicians or three kings. <laughs> three kings or something like that. Yeah. 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 Like Majesty. Um, 9.6% and uh, it doesn't say what hops are on the can, but I can look it up real quick. But uh, this thing is really smooth for a triple. Uh, you would never guess it and it's going to get me in trouble in a few minutes. It looks delicious. <laughs> that color is so good. Can I see that color? Super creamy. Yeah, so good. Did you not get this one, Bellino? I probably did. I've had so many of those. <laughs> like, you I think know, I, uh, I drink a beer. I don't, I forget the name. I don't I had, like, know a name. what I'm doing yeah. here. <laughs> So this one has Nelson, Citra, Rakow, and Galaxy. Yeah. Really Sounds nice great. combo. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did get that one. 
Yeah, it came out yeah, when uh, Shadow Existence came out. That was another really nice triple they did. Yeah. What's your normal drinking spots? What do you normally give your? Oh god, I don't really go out, but um. Or George. I, well, in the spots location wise, is not I'm in my 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 basement. <laughs> <laughs> this room right here is my the sex dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no well, I'm guessing one of your one of your favorite breweries in uh in Oregon. Well, I mean, there was we used to be Great Ocean for years and years and years or uh-huh. several years, and then uh definitely impressed by Brujos, but um, yeah, yeah. Beyond that, like I don't really get out a ton. Like I'm not like uh-huh. a beer snob, bona fide beer snob. I'm like a I'll enjoy beer, but um, like yeah. So I, I I can't taste. I can't appreciate beer as much as like Eric or Bowman or or Jimmy can. Um, We're his only friends, and uh, we don't live in Oregon, so <laughs> yeah. The internet's about uh, as exciting as it gets for him. This is how my life yeah. is, you know. It's just and we life. still don't uh, go to his basement. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you gotta go to you gotta go to Ruse. Ruse, those guys are awesome. Well, no, he goes I to Ruse. Did, uh, well, uh, Ruse. We've been Eric and I've been to Ruse together, and so is Matt. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Ruse is like maybe two miles away. It's really close. Oh yeah, those yeah. guys are dope. Love those yeah, they're guys. really good. Really good yeah. beer. I like Ruse as well. How's that say, Zod? It, I, it, I'm, it's growing on me. I'm liking it. Yeah. I was thinking it would make an absolute wonderful sauce over chicken, but mm. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> sounding like uh, Martha Stewart or something. Yeah. If I could figure out how to make a cream sauce out of it, it would be great. You just gotta, you just gotta <laughs> reduce it. You just gotta reduce it there like crazy. Go. Yeah. yeah, no, it's very tasty. Loving it. And don't let it boil, so you keep the alcohol in there. You know. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yep. Marinated. <laughs> Fun chicken. Why am I getting drunk from this chicken? <laughs> <laughs> the only way to go. Uh, so ooh. I think this is the last one, but uh, yeah, this one is nice. really crazy. And when I saw this, I was like, "Oh my god, this is this is different. This is special." And I don't think I had heard of. <laughs> Like maybe I know who Peter Gordon is, but the name didn't sound familiar, and I definitely haven't seen this image before. Yeah, this was a scroll stopper when it came up in my feed. A scroll stopper. Yeah, scroll stopper. That's a good term. That's perfect. Him. Well, you know, you just sit there and you just, you know, from 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 (laughs) from. And uh, this is definitely one of those. And this, I say, it's got some other interesting images on his. Instagram feed too, but this was definitely the one that caught my eye. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, he actually has one. Of my this is an amazing image. He has one of my yeah. favorite images I've seen recently. Um, he's get, so. In other words, for people out there, go to his hopefully website, but if not, go to his Instagram feed. And check is he on out. TikTok? <laughs> TikTok. I've never been on TikTok. Yeah, actually, TikTok. going out cool. going out to his uh, website is probably the best thing to do. Um, PeterGordonPhotography.com slash J Rod, did you just follow him or were you already following him? Uh, I just did. Okay. I just yeah, it said you were following him. Yeah. Instant follow? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> I guess I'll follow. If you guys, if you guys do, I trust you guys. Yeah. You should follow. There's just, oh, yeah, I'm there's excited a nice, to go look at his uh, stuff. Uh, there's a nice diversity of stuff in yeah. there for sure. Yeah. yeah. Some minimal, minimalism as well. Good stuff. Just when you think you've seen like every single waterfall image that's yeah. out there, you see this and it's yeah. completely different. And yeah. um, it looks like it's, it might have been shot on film, the way it kind of has like a purplish look to it. And the, the star. Yeah, that's the, the color, the color was is really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. It does look like film. And mm-hmm. it's 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 like that other one with that we were looking at the other waterfall with ice, is that you can see so far back into the scene, you know. Yeah. Um, it's not just really blocked up shadows and blown out highlights. You can just yeah. there's a lot of depth there. You can see a lot right. that's going. Yeah. Yeah. And just yeah, that like amazing. Fade, yeah. Just that amazing away. design. Yeah. And it's then like the the, yeah. the silky water is just like perfect. It looks like a like a yeah. wedding dress or like yeah. you know like. But it's silky very elegant as well. I it's like the silk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's got those streaks. Yeah. And then and then the the smaller like little uh, trickles of water down the sides. Yeah. Yeah. And the spot at the bottom. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to look at this one off of a uh, off of Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Worth it. 
it's almost uh almost like a, a spooky vibe to it as well which yeah. is it's yeah. really interesting i feel like i'm yeah. uh, almost immediately i felt like i was in a cave and this was coming yeah. into the cave yeah, yeah. Yeah, or it, it feels like a like a ghost, like a like yeah. a dead bride or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that cho- yeah, that choice of mahogany at the bottom is really really cool too. Like how it just I like notice like, that, but yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Somebody like everything is yeah, that. everything hits that purple, and then you get that hint of red at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Really sick. Yeah. Yep. I like the bold color as well. Yeah, yeah. it works. I call it very sleek. Silky, yeah, that's amazing. All this, all this stuff has been top notch, Suzanne. I, uh, Good. I'm glad you guys enjoyed them and enjoy sharing them with you. Oh yeah, that's uh, some great images. It's amazing. Yeah, and nice to have some new names. <clears throat> so uh, yeah. this one's from a photographer you guys might have heard of. She's oh, uh, that looks familiar. What is this? <laughs> this is So it's funny because earlier you said like you don't really do black and white, but this is a really nice black and white image in my opinion. I I wouldn't even want to see it in color. I feel like the black and white does so much justice here. So Sometimes it definitely works. I I have converted one of my cameras to infrared. Um, I don't believe this was one of them, but uh, working at infrared, I really, really enjoy, especially with canyons and clouds and storms. Um, it could be some incredible images that I get from there. Do you storm chase? I, no, I wait for storms to come to me. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go plonk myself where I think they're going to be, and then I, I wait for them to come to me. Um, and then I have friends that do storm chase, and so when they're in the same place I am, I know I'm in a good spot. So Nice. <laughs> Crazy. At least you won't get blown away. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, you ever this shoot? Was, yeah, good old Grand Canyon. This is my best friend. You know, we've been friends for a long time and we know each Have other. Have you ever uh, ran into Peter Koskin out there? Oh, sure. I know Peter. Yeah. Well, 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 well. Yeah. Okay. Um, in fact, I, uh, we went on a river trip last year. I took him down the Colorado River. Um, nice. All the way through the Grand Canyon. It was, it was awesome. We had a great time. Him and his now fiance, Sarah. Oh, cool. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, he proposed to her down on the river, which was one of oh, the great. Nice. Yeah, yeah, no, that was great. Yeah, Peter's a cool dude. I uh, I've been on a couple trips with him. Um, yeah. but yeah, he has a lot of Grand Canyon stuff, and stormy stuff like this. So yeah. I was wondering if you guys had done. Yeah. I didn't want to ask if you're friends because that could be an awkward moment, you know. On, uh, on, we on are, public internet, we but... are very much friends. Yes, I love cool. Peter. I, I suspected. <laughs> so I, I really love this image, um, just individually, but um. I, I also just was kind of determined to share something of yours from the Grand Canyon because you have so many incredible Grand Canyon images. So I wanted to hear you talk about, you know, your Grand Canyon relationship and uh, maybe a little bit about that first time that you rafted through the Grand Canyon and what that was like, uh, where yeah. you wanted to quit your job afterwards. So um, <laughs> yeah, I thought this would set up some good Yeah, discussion. well, I, I knew I wanted to quit my job actually before i even went on that grand canyon trip it was just the fact that that was the last sort of bit of vacation time i could squeeze out um and then you know then then decide to to quit my job but i must admit that going on that grand canyon trip it said that's it and in fact when i went i decided to myself that i would have to go absolutely every year after that um, unfortunately, Drafting. it didn't always work out that way, but I have been on a few trips since then. Uh, and there's there's nothing like going down the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon for 7, 12, 14, 18 days. It's That's what I was going to ask, typically, like how many days it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can go, let's just say... You can, you can do eight. I think that's just way too fast. Okay. Um, but you can do eight, um, and it's definitely worth doing. But if you can do a, a 12, 14-day trip, or even longer, obviously, um, that's the way to do it. Because you lose all sense of time and place and schedules and everything else. You just literally go with the flow. You know, and you're just on river time and you just you eat when you're hungry, you sleep when you're tired, you row when you need to row and you cruise when you need to cruise. Um, And it's it's definitely 
um, without hyperbole. It's a life-changing experience. It really is. So cool. Uh, I have a friend. So when you've done those uh, trips, did you set those up with tour companies or people you know that were guiding or yeah, just friends? Yeah, so I've, I've done it a number of different ways through the years. But yeah, mostly through tour companies. I haven't done um, like a... a um, a, a rowboat trip through, but you know, mostly it's been on a motorized trip, uh, which has been great because you can make time when you need to make time, and it's very conducive to photography and uh, camera equipment and tripods and you know, getting on and off. and And I've done a hybrid trip, which we've had some ore boats and we've had uh, motor boats, which is probably the best combination ever. So you can be in the oar boats when you can go slow, and then you can be in the motor boats when you need to go a little bit faster to make up some time. Um, but the experience itself, just going down the river is, yeah, it's unbelievable. If you can ever find a way to do it, do it, because it's incredible. Is there a tour company you'd recommend? You know, it's funny. I, I recommend my boatman. And my boatmen change tour companies every year. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, th there's a number of ones that I could recommend, but they're all really, really very good. Yeah. There's, there's nobody okay. that I would say doesn't do a good job. Um, but I tend to follow boatmen around. So, because they kind of know what I like and they know what I like to do as far as photography and what I need to be able to access equipment quickly and get on and off boats quickly. Um, so people that are, are really good doing that, they're people that I tend to follow around. Yeah. So when I think about the Colorado River and going down it, I picture these giant waves. Like I've done a little <laughs> bit of rivers in my time. I'm not a water guy, but they look absolutely horrifying to me as a, as a <laughs> land lover. Like so, how did you? How did that go for you? Like, okay, is it well, isn't is is it, uh, isn't lava falls the most technical part? Yeah, but that's the easiest one. <laughs> Why is that? So, I insane. mean, honest to God, lava falls is a breeze compared. So what's to, what's well, the what's okay, the? So remember that I'm merely a passenger, not a boatman. Now a boatman may have a different idea about lava falls. Okay, but for me, it's the relatively close to the end of the trip. I've already been through, you know crystal which is you know so crystal <laughs> rapid we have a thing that says abc alive below crystal you know so if you make it through crystal you got it made um <laughs> so lava isn't really that bad but it looks way worse in videos than it is when you're actually Crazy. doing it i promise you um yeah i mean i was i was panicky before i went on my first trip um and now it's just like you know no big deal you know it's <laughs> yeah it's fun you know, the, 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 uh, the yeah. rapids that are just like hermit rapid is like a roller coaster and you mm. can get right out, right out on the front of the raft and just ride it like a fucking bronco it's just awesome <laughs> yeah as long as my camera gear is safe and dry and you know my friends are safe and dry um i'm happy uh, those guys really know how to navigate the waters down there. So, if it, don't be afraid, do it. <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah, I have a friend that guides the guides this river all the time. I'm about to hit her up. Cool. Yeah, cool. And uh, she get us a discount, a little bruising views tour. Yeah, I'll. Uh, <laughs> that, that that would be fun. Yeah, yeah. I'll ask, I'll ask her, yeah. Just just drinking all day we're on the boats and then shooting at in the evenings and in <laughs> yeah. the mornings. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, well, what if we together, shot from I the boats? Together a group of about oh, I can't remember how many of this were, maybe 14 of us. Um and it was just fellow photographers and friends and we just went down and oh, we just had the best time. It was oh, the awesome. most amazing. Cool. Yeah. That's like a great time. Fantastic. Yep. Amazing. Yeah, that, that's something I definitely want to do at least once in my life. I feel like you got to. Yeah. 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 Okay. If you go, Eric, let me know. I want to go too. Sounds okay. like I could do. Uh, <laughs> I could do some pretty good ICM right from the boat. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can. We get a group What's on for this. The camera. Just... We get a group on. <laughs> What's the best time of the year, Suzanne? April or September. Of course. So uh, it's the April it's, or yeah, September. It's okay, the not summer. Of the season or the end of the season. For me, mm. I mean, that's just a personal thing. Um, but I either like the first trip or the last trip of the season is usually the best for me. 
In what sense? Um, in April, you get <laughs> spring and we can have some nice blooms and some brittle bush on the um, canyons. Um, September, you get mon you know, the tail end of monsoon stuff. So that can be kind of interesting as well. And it's not so bloody hot because, you know, June, July, August, it's, you know, 100 and God knows what down there. Um, so even though you're on the water, um, it, it's nice to be able to sleep cool at night. Okay. Yeah. Cool. J-Rod, how's that uh, stout you're drinking? Uh, really nice. Yeah. I didn't uh, chime in when we were busting open things, but uh, this is uh, the last one of these I have. Oh, you still had one of those from uh, their anniversary? Yeah, I didn't realize it was still back in the fridge. Um, but uh, this is a Fiden's uh, internal silence that was from last fall, I guess, right? How did it hold up? Um, um, it's faded a little bit, but in a nice way. Um, so it, it had a, a, a good bit of wild Thai um, banana and cocoa nibs in it. Um, but uh, I think I enjoyed it maybe a couple more months earlier, but um, but it's it's very nice. The smell is amazing. The room smells super sweet yeah. and uh, banana. That one was really good. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if Stout has banana and cocoa nibs together, there's there's just like no way it could go wrong. Maybe. Uh, well, sometimes they about, don't put enough not go uh, wrong, banana. But like it just that combination <laughs> yeah. just feels and, or sounds so yeah. just delectable. No, the combination is always good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But sometimes the banana doesn't come through. It's it's not the overpowering you say one episode, at all. The Thai bananas, yeah. yeah. Like there's a special banana type which actually is really good for stouts. Yeah, just the wild type banana. I, other half, other half made it super popular. Okay. And uh, if like they dehydrate it or like some type of way, and they just concentrate the flavor. Yeah. Really, really well. Yeah. But uh, the past two winters, they've done a nice stout. It was all. It was. I think the only one that they released this year. Yeah. But, I think uh, so. Yeah, maybe one or two. Yeah, um, we canned a couple things, but um, weren't that weren't that nice. Yeah, well, can we go back to the Wait, other? Image yeah, go back things? to the photo. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, talk, that image deserves yeah. more to talk about here. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, like, if you want drama, this is this is like going up to eleven. Like, this is beyond ten. This, the drama yeah. is just insane. Yeah, and the way that cloud left the center just parts right into the gap into the canyon, the narrowest part of the canyon, is yeah. insane. Like what a moment! Um, the balance is insane. You have this buttes on the right side of the midway mark with the dark spot above it. Like it just all works in such a great conjunction. Yeah. How many? I mean, you probably don't remember, but I can imagine you probably fired off like a hundred different frames or more uh, as this whole scene evolved with the with the cloud swirling and descending and yeah. raining out. Um, yeah, maybe, must have been insane to be yeah, there. Maybe not, though. Yeah. Um, hmm. No, I, I, because she's more know, intentional I, than you are, Belina. Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, 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 but, hey, and I, I don't mean that to sound this way, but I, I do, I do remember this particular, this yeah. particular afternoon. Um, how long ago but, was this? So, oh, I don't remember. It all, it all blends into one. Uh, monsoon season at the Grand Canyon. It happens every year. But I can sit there and just wait. And I can literally wait for, oh, I wish this cloud was over here. Or I wish this bit of light was over there. And the Grand Canyon just serves it up. So you, all you do is kind of sit and wait. And then, you know. Uh, so I probably only took maybe five or 10 images in this particular case. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, because I just knew where where it was going and where the light was going. You can see yeah. it because it's so massive, you know, in front of you. You can see where the light is. You can see where the shadows are. You can see what's going to happen in front of you. And it, it just kind of evolves. Yeah. You're probably um, photographing in different sections of the entire canyon with the cloud land perfect. interaction. This is just one of them. Perfect. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Just, just think what she's location that just happened. Yeah, she just said think what she's. Sit... She knows the canyon well. Yeah, you can just yeah. sit there and just watch it go by. It's and Got just it. say, okay, you know, I want this Hello. to be here and this to be there and maybe this over here and you just wait a little minute and it's. In other words, Suzanne has a really great bank of cloud photographs <laughs> that she was, you know, she had the perfect I one to drop into this scene. In uh, yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> Yeah, it's actually AI. Yeah, yeah. looking at yeah, yeah looking totally, at totally AI. Cloud and gap yeah. generate. 
<laughs> but you know, I mean, I, I just, I, I, I love the Grand Canyon. I'm very lucky to have it right on my doorstep, and um, I'm up a lot, and I just love to watch the weather and the light and the shadows, and you know, it's like an old friend. You just get to know it, and it shows you different moods, and you know, I, it's just a great place to be. Yeah, I should get down there sometime. I've only been once. Really? Yeah, and it's only like five hours, five and a half hours to most spots. Yeah, you but, need uh, to do that a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when I look at this photo, it feels like I'm seeing the soul of the Grand Canyon as it kind of just mm. like comes yeah, out of comes out of it. You know, it just mm. feels like there's there's a person coming out of that gap right there. You know, you can see the arms and the legs and the head just like coming out of the coming out of that gap. Yeah. It definitely has an anthropomorphic look. Uh, now I can't it, unsee that. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, yeah, what other images wife, can we ruin? <laughs> sometimes I'll have like prints hanging in our house, and my wife is like, "Oh, like you can't see that face," and she'll show it to me, and then like that's the only thing you can see yeah, every time you look at it from then on. And I'd I never just even gotta come down. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's well. So it has a season like that pretty much every year. Yeah, so monsoon season, wow. it's like uh, July, August, early September is the best. What kind of a um, vehicle do you have to get out there? A uh, forerunner. Okay, nice. That's yeah, like so, the I mean, classic just, photographer, landscape photographer vehicle. Straight, yeah, this is just coming straight off the rim, so you could go here in a Prius. Um, oh, it's uh, is it paved or just so, really so, graded? Yeah, it's pretty yeah, paved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all paved around. The, okay. This is south rim, so this is paved all the way around. And it's just a question of... You know, I mean, most people, when the weather's like this, the tourists are gone. You know, this yeah. is awful to them. Taking um, shelter. Yeah. And then there's just a few crazy photographers. I usually run into a lot of my friends out there um, when it's like this and, you know, mm -hmm. really enjoy it. All right. Are you guys done? Can we move on? Yes. <laughs> Please. Yep. <laughs> No, nah, it's really nice. I'm glad you guys uh, uh, chimed in some more. Th this one's really crazy. I didn't pick this yeah. one, but um, yeah, it's really nice. I I picked this one. I when I saw it, it was just like, oh my god, I got to feature this one. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's I mean, crazy. You have a mountain and you have an arch. Yeah, on a sandstone. You've got a landscape <laughs> within the landscape. Uh, got Mesa Arch right here. <laughs> that's great. I mean, if you can just kind of like think about like the you know Utah's mountains, Utah's sandstone arches, like what a great what do you want to call it? Summary of those two different massively like like known features in Utah, but also like little things like above the mountain is a brighter part of the sandstone. The sky is brighter typically than the landscape. I mean, there's so the many clouds, yeah. ways this works really yeah. well um, for me. And I was just like, oh my god, I've you know, I've been in the desert a, a decent amount, not a ton, and I've seen a lot of cool things on the walls as you go through these canyons, but nothing close to this. Um, this is a and, pretty special spot that's for yeah. sure yeah i just you're just gonna give really us the coordinates cool. right yeah. no that's off, off air. <laughs> all right show that's over. in the fine print for you gotta agreement. share it that's suzanne not... you can't be a gatekeeper you gotta share yeah, it with everybody yeah, yeah. you can't keep it to yourself <laughs> can't be a gatekeeper, yeah. <laughs> elitist so this, really was, such a cool uh, this image actually is part of a collection i'm working on a uh, project i guess you call it um, called Terra Incognito, yeah. which is, uh, you know, images of the earth that nobody knows about except yep. me and a couple of other people. <laughs> I think um, this has Natural Landscape Photography of the Year, uh, like a project written all over, it sounds like. Oh, I wish that was true. I, um, I don't know about that. But yes, this is this is in this is a far away spot in a very well-known place let's put it that way mm -hmm. and uh it took me a bit to get there and it took a bit of hiking and a bit of um, traveling to get there um but there's a lot of images from this particular area in part of my terra incognito project that i'm working on and i'm glad it resonated with you guys because um so for me, when you go out to the um, the sandstones of the Arizona desert, and I'm sure same thing with southern Utah, you see these fins, um, and most of the fins are broken off and yeah. just rubble. Yeah, um, I was gonna say the ma the mountain peak looks so delicate. Yeah, so that's just extrusion. Um, 
And some of the fins in some of these areas are so light. If you tap them very, very gently with your finger, they just make like beautiful little sounds, but they're like as delicate as lace. And they're just so fine and so beautiful. And well, like white, white it, pocket used to have fins like all over it. And now it's just like exactly, smooth and ground down. Exactly. And yeah. so all those areas now are, you know, just chewed down or broken down and, you know, trampled on. But I just wanted to be able to photograph the areas of the fins the way they used to be before they were trampled. And this is one of those areas. Yeah. Such a cool image. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely. I saw that. I was like, boom, I'm definitely featuring this one. Yeah, and I'm pretty familiar with most of your work because I've been following you for a while, but I'd never seen this photo before. Well, it's kind of I'm incognitoing the incognito. <laughs> mm, you're kind of slowly yeah. releasing it in the darkness. Yeah, slowly releasing it, yeah. And that's what's so cool about your website is that there's so many different galleries or collections to kind of go through. Yeah. Which is lot. great. Like, I was just like, okay, another one, another one, another one, another one. So um, <laughs> this is probably one of my well, favorite you know, we, were, the... we were having this conversation the other day on Discord, actually, um, about, you know, releasing so many images or having so many galleries. And, and you're so super hip. Stuff. You're on Discord and everything. You're like <laughs> a... I am. Oh, I am like... TikTok. <laughs> and... I, yeah. TikTok. No, I'm not on TikTok. You still can't get me on TikTok. Not even on Discord. Right anyway, it's just a great little Discord. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it, it's just, you have to be, sometimes, you know, if I was doing a fine art photography website for only fine art prints for a very small select group of people i would have a lot less galleries and a lot less images in my galleries but my website is basically a glorified stock photography gallery because i get people that want prints for you know hotels or healthcare or magazines or calendars or you know all that kind of stuff and it's not necessarily what i would call my a-list print gallery stuff so i put it all out there you know there it is if it's a halfway decent image it goes out on my gallery and that may not be the way that a lot of people do it but it works for me that way yeah i want to see your website the way you do it good because that's the way I do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I, I think you should just do whatever you feel good just, with. And yeah, that's going to come across well me. because it's yep. deliberate. I just do me. Yeah, and it works that way for me. So. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, this is a pretty special place. And I'm glad you guys appreciate it. Oh, yeah. This photo is yeah, insane. Cool. What, what, hey, what is this? scale here like were you super zoomed in mid-range uh, like so scale so those fins at the top are probably a foot, foot okay and a half. so it's a decent chunk of wall yeah oh it's a definitely and but and the other part about this too is just all the colors and the gradations and everything that's going yeah. through all the sandstone there is just yeah I actually, I literally cried when I saw it, to be honest with you. Um, it's so cool. Because it yeah. was just it's so amazing to be able to see that, and it's the way it should be. Um, yeah. And I, I took a lot of photographs up there, and I'll release a lot more eventually. Um, yeah. But just to see it sort of completely untouched and undamaged was, was a sight to behold, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. The um, I was gonna say that the lower the lower quarter of that the, the you know the darker sandstones um, and the shape of them remind me a lot of like driftwood or mm -hmm. something very organic. Yeah, very much like driftwood. Yeah. Which is you know, and then you have it split half diagonally. It's just like two different <laughs> images, but it totally works together. It's just uh, it's really remarkable. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, you have a version of this photo that like goes further to the right as well that I also yep. really, really enjoy. Oh yeah, I worked mm. that scene really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. I don't blame yeah. you. Yeah, this one this one's like a little bit flatter, but really? that third that the other version just gives it this three D look that is also really, really so, incredible. Are you saying I picked the wrong version, man? Are you are <laughs> no, you No, this one this one's like really guessing one, my yeah. MRI. Yeah. What's no, the name of this has... gallery on your website? Terra Incognito. Probably Terra Incognito. Go visit it. It's amazing. Yeah, it's like, really, seriously. really good. Really, really good. 
There's a lot of great images there. Oh. Yeah, maybe, I'm going to for sure. Eric, maybe you can pay attention. <laughs> You're asking a lot. <laughs> I'm a father of I have four kids. Suzanne knows what it's like. Yeah. You're asking a lot. <laughs> Yeah, and I love I love that the the arch portion is just like really really soft. It just gives this painterly look, you know, yeah. just the brush strokes. Mm hmm. It's really sick. It, it's a really great yeah. image. Yeah. I, I I'd be very proud of this image if I had it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure you would. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's, that's a low bar to reach. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. You know me. That that should probably be like the background image for the episode, Jimmy, J Rod. Cool. Got it. So I did pick the best image. Thank you. There we go. All right. Yeah. It's good. High five. <laughs> taking credit for. Yes. I always it's feel a bit yeah. guilty, you know, taking a photograph. I mean, I really, all I did was stand there. Uh, nature made it. I just stood there. I have a very similar perspective of uh, my own photography. I feel like nature presents me things and I'm just a channel. Uh -huh. For them yeah. to be shown to people i'm not the creator of them as much as i like art um and i do consider myself an artist because like i'm not just documenting stuff how it looks i usually show my own perspective but at the end of the day like nature created everything all the materials that i use and uh right. Right. i feel like i'm just there to see it and show it to someone right. else I just yeah. kind of show how it feels too because i mean there was a lot of feeling when i was shooting that yeah it comes through. And, yeah. And your feeling is also based upon the fact that you know what's been lost by visiting other areas where these yeah. have been just trampled and broken. Right. Yeah. Even like, I remember I did a camera club presentation. The guy took me out the dinner before and he talked about in the 90s going to the wave. Yeah. Uh, like a one on one or a small group workshop with a guy. And he's just like, oh, you just kind of walk on these things that are crumpling on these yeah. still intact. Yeah. Um, formations and he said he was horrified but the workshop leader was just like close to how the impact he was having on the environment so yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys are just being good presenters of what's out there and what we need to preserve so just not getting in the way of it you know yeah not getting in the way of the beauty that already exists and just showing yeah. it in a way that it can be appreciated yeah, it's so I, I show the I show these images on uh, workshops, uh, especially in areas that uh, have been damaged, just to show people, you know, that this is what it it was and this is what it could be. So just be extra careful, you know. Yep. So um, we all really liked your images from your what's it called? Something wake. Patterns in the wake. That's another patterns in the wake gallery. I've been working on. Yeah. So I mean, I we don't have to talk about each one but I'll, I'll scroll through a few while you're talking about these because uh it was really hard to pick just one but uh J jimmy can start with this one because this or j-rod because that was his uh pick <laughs> but um i'm gonna go through some other ones too while you're talking suzanne so yeah. i mean the, these are sort of uh <laughs> reminds me kind of like staring at a lava lamp when you were high back in the day <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's exactly back in the day what, or right now or right now <laughs> back, back in the day so um working so a lot all of these were taken out at lake powell um and if lake powell is just like glass which it is often and you go a certain speed through the wake and just like just let the houseboat just sway just a little bit you get these beautiful reflections of sandstone and the cliffs and the sky and, you know, just what's going on in the water. And it's endlessly changing and undulating and just the images are great. And every time I go out there, I say, I'm not going to get more pictures of patterns in the wake, but I <laughs> always do. Because Irresistible. Absolutely. Addictive. Yeah. yeah, I absolutely love them. So this is a project I've been working on a while. And this just reminds me of caramel ice cream getting all whipped up, you know. Mm. Yeah, crazy. How can you not take photos of this? Really I know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really not totally too. addictive. It, yeah. Yeah. So you just hang out at the back end of the boat and just watch the wakes go by. Are those like leisure trips, or those trips to get into an area where you can actually do more photography, or oh, at, at, yeah, workshop. Workshops, know, got it. 100% workshop, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure the participants are just like, yeah, this is fantastic. Oh, yeah. 
yeah lovely so, this so i know the just, well i was gonna say i know the water level has been a lot lower at least last year it was really low and uh did you do like much exploration into certain parts that became like more yeah, exposed? So, I mean, for me, I know I should be overly concerned that the water levels get low, but when the water levels are low, they reveal different parts of the lake that we don't get to see normally. Right. And then now this year they've, they've come back up because we've had a really good snow melt, a good snow pack. So the water levels are back up again. So it fluctuates all the time. I mean, yeah. Mm. Um, so I'm happy going out on the lake, no matter what level the waters are, because I can always find something interesting of something I haven't seen before. Yeah. And, you know, the Glen Canyon was lost when that dam was made. And it was, was it ever yeah. Weston who has a book? Like, it's Elliot Porter. Like, it's Elliot uh, Porter. a place yeah. no one knew yeah. I have it. Yeah. yeah like, um, I need to get that book. Um, yeah. I wonder. So, yeah, there's, so, lost there's a lot that's hidden underneath underneath the waters, even yeah. even now. Yeah. Yep. so so that's that's that was a question i had for you because that's kind of like a conflicting thing for me like i've never been drawn to go photograph lake powell because i feel like it's like yeah. a conservation graveyard like I, I feel really bitter towards it but um i i'm not criticizing you for going and photographing it i feel no, like in, no. the, in a no, way I, you're I, seeing I, like I, you know the bright side understand. like well at least yeah. you can you can still enjoy this and you're and you're being pragmatic about it so yeah um, no I, I certainly understand it but the way i kind of look at it not or have to look at it is right. that everything is is safely underneath the water now even though we can't see it we can't enjoy it it's still down there it's still safe and it's we can't do anything horrible to it so yeah water does preserve things very well yeah, it does preserve <clears throat> things really well and what's going on on the top level is just can be pretty amazing um so next to the grand canyon Probably Lake Powell is one of my favorite places to shoot. And then after that would be White Sands. So, hmm. Yeah, so J-Rod uh, picked this one. Yeah, I've been staring at it here for a few minutes, just listening to you talking about it. But um, it, I guess what struck me at first was um, that I, I just did kind of immediately see faces in here. And, <laughs> um, and I ruined it for Yeah, no, I'm you trying know. not to, but yeah. I won't point them out. <laughs> But just different characters and different emotions yeah. and um, yeah. it's kind of whimsical. But what's, what's, what's really great while while you're photographing these things is it I mean you could shoot like 50 frames a second and still get different images every time. Yeah, for but sure. But it's just watching these patterns and shapes just undulate and change like every second. It's just mesmerizing. Oh, here's another yeah. one. Yeah, uh, this one's so really that's, crazy. That's the miserable and... contrails, but look how great they look in in that image. Okay, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, the, the sandstone swirling. cliffs, and mm -hmm. obviously a little yeah. bit of the wake, and then contrails up in the sky. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Oh. That's a dope image. Yeah, really nice composition here. Like, did did you see this? Like, be honest, Suzanne. Did you see this in the moment and you're like, oh, boom, got it. Yeah. Or were you just like, click, 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 click. And then later on, you're like, oh, no, wow, that no, one. Like, no, no, I could see it because you can see it. I mean, it's, it's sort of like going back to that Grand Canyon. It's pretty thing. constant. You can, like, see, you can see it coming, you know. Mm, <laughs> so yeah. you say, well, okay, here. We Maybe go. you can. Yeah. 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 yeah, you can. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and yeah, like, cool. yeah, like this too i mean it just it <laughs> undulates you know so you can see it so you take three or four shots here and there and you know mm -hmm. eventually you'll get something yeah. that's you know, yeah these colors and shapes. i see a lot of water reflection images these days yeah. but these are all very unique yeah yeah those are so cool very much yours. When, I, yeah. when i released a few of these i got some i uh, saw some really good feedback from all over the uh, all over the world actually which yeah. was nice. uh, very encouraging because they thought oh well, you know it's just me i just like these images just playing so, around it, yeah. yeah so it was kind of nice to see it was resonating with other people yeah. as well that's great yeah when i was going through your portfolio i very much got that sense that like you just you just have a lot of fun uh you're just playing around experimenting a lot you don't get stuck like in yeah. you know within a creative box like you're always trying new things and you're just not it's not that you don't take it seriously, like you don't care about it. You don't, you know, you don't produce like really like intentional stuff. New. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You're not afraid yeah. to, 
to branch out and, and yeah. play around. And I really like yeah. that about your work. Yeah. I just enjoy, I enjoy photography, you know, but yeah. that just happens to be at the time, you know, whether it's something like this or portraits or pictures of smoke or, you know, intimate scenes or grand landscapes. I just enjoy the process of photography, whatever. That it comes means. through in your work. Yeah. yeah the multi-genre sure. work. Yeah. This one's really crazy. That's one of that my series. favorites. Yeah. Never seen anything like this. I remember when you first posted this a couple of years ago, I was blown away. I was like, That's oh my so God, cool. that is so fucking cool. Well, actually, that was my first probably <laughs> test shot, if you want to call it that. It's like, is okay. anybody else going to think this Humble, is cool? humble test shot. Oh, like, test like shot. When, you, when you posted it, you were kind of feeling the water? Yeah, it's just like, you know, it's, yeah, I like it, but does anybody else like it? And, and they did. So it's like, oh, okay, well. Cool. Just the way that like golden <laughs> shape is so defined in the center, it's just so crazy. Yeah, yeah. it's like, it like a feather. Like casting a shadow too, as well. Like it's like almost a three D. Yeah, right. Yeah. Such a nice ast- abstract scene. It's like a flame yeah. in yeah. this yeah, ice. It's kind of like a flame. That's how it appeared to me too. Yeah, but that's all just reflections of sandstone on blue water. Yeah. Wow. Cool. I think it was the lead image in your collection there for yeah uh, yeah terry incognito but oh well, Aww. Yeah. <laughs> well that brings back memories yeah so where do you find penguins not in arizona yeah. i imagine no but... <laughs> no no so this was south georgia island yeah. um part of the antarctica trip i was on yeah. but, uh we stopped at south georgia and quite frankly if i was to do a trip like this again i would just go to south georgia island um as as fantastic as antarctica is there's nothing compared to south georgia um and the amount of wildlife and the scenery and everything else there is just unbelievable Hmm. unbelievable where is uh, south georgia i think i it's the only place i've been in the world where i i felt like i'd been somewhere i had never been before you know i've been i've been fortunate to travel in a lot of places but Antarctica and Georgia Island were complete otherworldly for me. Where is South Georgia? Like, is it just an island off? In of Georgia, dude, you just fly into Atlanta and get a rental <laughs> yeah. car and right? yeah. a little ferry to the yeah. island. So we <laughs> left from we left from Buenos Aires, and we were heading down towards Antarctica, and we came across South Georgia Island. So it's between Buenos Aires and Antarctica. Okay, it's just off of, okay. Right. That's yeah. cool. It's just yeah. north of Florida, right? Yeah, just north of Florida. <laughs> just north yeah. of Florida. Yeah. 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 I was just, Wait, I was just in that part of the world. But I was yeah, just in no, Patagonia. I mean, South, if oh, you can cool. ever get, to, I, mean, I, I say if you can never get to the Grand Canyon, but if you can ever get to South Georgia somehow, that is yeah. the most incredible place I think I've ever yeah. been in my entire life. Adding uh-huh. another thing to the list, Suzanne. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, because it's not just wildlife; it's also obviously the mountains in the background, the glaciers, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh-huh. You can do everything there, correct? Yeah, so cool. Yeah. This so is like you were on. Around. I mean, there's you were on land when you shot this, and millions of penguins. I mean, it's it's just unbelievable. Was it noisy? Yes. Was it <laughs> smelly? Yeah, it's a cacophony, and no, it wasn't smelly because okay. I we went relatively early in the season. So they hadn't gotten all poopy scoopy yet. Uh, <laughs> so it was it was actually quite uh, pleasant. Yeah. Good. <laughs> how yeah. uh how close were you to these to these guys? They would walk over you if you let them. Oh my god. So wow. Very ideally, ideally you you, you want to keep your distance. Um but if they approach you, they approach you. And that's that's what happens. So, you know, you'd, you'd keep a, a relatively good distance. And obviously we had long lenses, but they're, they so don't care, you know, so they'll literally come up and talk to you. you know? They're like three, four feet tall. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They These have- are um, king penguins. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not like the emperors, which are further down in um, Antarctica. So these are the king penguins. Emperors are bigger. Yeah, emperors are much bigger. Wow. Also, yeah. Also, these guys look like a like a boy band for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the colors and and just the shading. You know, just trying to get 
close-ups of just the colors on yeah. their feathers there is just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this group of penguins just like stand out for I'd sure. I'd love to go. I'd love to go back and do it again because I was so overwhelmed the first time I went. I just, you know, I just didn't even know what I was doing half the time and just hoping for the best. But I'd love to go back and do it again a little bit more seriously. Uh -huh. Do you know how big this island island is? No, I don't. Not very. If you've ever read uh, Endurance by. Well, it's endurance yeah. about Ernest or about um, Shackleton's. Shackleton, uh, yeah. So we last... went to we went to Shackleton's grave. So I you did. Wow. That. Oh, yes. wow. Yeah. The book is oh, they insane. buried him down in Antarctica. Yeah. So oh, his grave that. is down there. Yeah. Did he well, die on a return that. trip or something? I forget. Did he die like going back after that crazy two year odyssey? No, he didn't. He didn't die in an adventure. I don't think. He didn't. No. If you don't know about the story, the it's the most insane story I've ever heard in my life. Read the book. Yeah, and that one, he he crosses oh. Elephant Island on foot. It's not South Georgia, but... It's not South Georgia? Okay. No. Elephant Island. That's where he got to? Where the fishing... Yeah, where he, the whaling village was? The Norwegian oh. base, yeah. Got it. He crossed it on foot. First man ever to do it. Crazy. Wow. Adding it to my so list. Insane. Yeah, that book's oh, crazy. And then Alone insane. on the Ice is really good, too. What's right. it called? Yeah. Alone on the Ice. Alone on the ice. Yeah. Okay. It's about the Australian expedition, which was like 10 years before that. And it was even more gruesome and horrific. Like nobody which, survived. And Shackleton, everyone, everyone survived with Shackleton. Two years yeah. or whatever it is. Like it's insane. So a lot of the guys that went with Shackleton were the ones that survived that first journey. Uh -huh. So like uh -huh. Harley, the photographer, uh -huh. and uh, the main leader, they all went back with Shackleton and they got stuck again. <laughs> Oh my God! And luckily, unlucky. they didn't unlucky. die. Yeah, yeah. Oh, super yeah, crazy. Man. Crazy. No yeah, GPS. The fact that they, yeah. No weather updates. Nothing. Oh, they didn't have cell phones yeah. back then. <laughs> no, 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 they didn't. No. They didn't have the no, Garmin uh, in reach. No Garmin. No, uh, yeah, no Garmin. No windy. No weather underground. Nothing. <laughs> no Onyx. <laughs> no Onyx. Yeah, what an what an experience though. Like, how many people have a? Uh, sorry to say the word grandma, but. You know, that's doing this kind of stuff. Like, oh yeah, she's oh, just actually, in Antarctica it, right now. It was it was kind of funny because my granddaughter um, had a. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Flat Stanley. Does that ring a bell with anybody? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you know Flat Stanley. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's this thing in like elementary school where you have this cut out picture of this character named Stanley. And you send Stanley around to your various relatives and friends, and they photograph him in these interesting locations, you know, Connecticut or Vermont or New Hampshire or whatever. I see where this is going. Yeah, I guess where Nana went. Nana went to Antarctica, and so <laughs> kind of aced the we aced the flat Stanley project for that year, which was kind of that is cool. awesome. That is so awesome. I've got pictures of flat, flat Stanley with a um, a leopard seal and penguins and <laughs> oh all over the place. So that was kind of fun. Yeah, that was that was fun. <laughs> That's cool. That's awesome. Cool, cool as grandma. Yeah, yeah, cool Nana. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> well. That's the last one. That's, that's it. it. That's, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's all I got. And yeah. it went by pretty fast. Up. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm going to awesome go look through your website some more because I yeah. ashamedly had actually never been on your website before. I've been following you on Facebook and Instagram and thought I was seeing everything. But uh, when I was on your website and I saw like yeah. 700 galleries, <laughs> I was like, holy shit, I got to yeah. take <laughs> some time to look through all this Weird. and. You, you have such a wide array of like genres that you right. um, yeah uh, i just like to photograph to, i just realize. enjoy it all i really yep. do you know uh -huh. um, so and this yeah. is surprises gonna... like it go ahead i uh, just uh, surprises like i think one of your maybe it's a north room of the grand canyon there might be some bison there as yeah. well i yeah. have no idea there's bison on the north room of the grand canyon yeah. yeah well they're trying to get rid of them but you know, are they? Um, they're, right they're, now, not they're, local. There. they're not native to that area. I'm assuming. Uh, no, they were introduced. There's, there's, yeah, there's a bit of controversy about them, but Got they it. are kind of cool to look at. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> they are. Uh, right now, they're well, still so. thriving. So. Yeah. They're trying to get grizzlies back in the Pacific Northwest. Yes. Well, yeah. you know, it's mixed bag. Yeah. The, the whole thing with bad. that, though, is like, yeah. 
I get it. Like reintroduce a species that used to be native there, but it's not the same ecosystem that you're reintroducing them to. Like you're not bringing them back home. It's, it's a different place now. And so yeah. Yeah. I'm skeptical of those kind of projects. Might be better just come naturally have them re reintegrate, you know, yeah. and there are grizzlies that do roam south of the border in Canada. It's just a few yeah. and far between. Yeah. But Did you guys really hear close to the border? We saw a big brown black bear and we we're like, whoa, but it was just a black bear. Did you guys hear they were going, they had, they had taken the DNA from like some kind of, they, they had like been able to extract some kind of ancient DNA from a mammoth, like from, from the bones or some kind of remains and then put it into an egg into an elephant. And it was supposed to like give birth, I think this year or maybe late last year. And they were going to try and reintroduce like woolly mammoths to Siberia. And uh, there's this whole project that it's a totally legit thing. Like it sounds crazy. Like it sounds like Jurassic Park stuff, yeah. but um, um, they were going to use elephants because their DNA is like really close together. So the elephants uh, were going to be like surrogate mothers for these woolly mammoths. And they're going to reintroduce them because a lot of like the permafrost and stuff has been melting because the woolly mammoths used to smash it down and keep it compressed which would help it from thawing in the warmer months. And uh, they would like knock over trees and like all these things that would really impact the landscape. So they were, it was a conservation project to try and reintroduce uh, woolly yeah, mammoths. I heard about that. I, heard about that. Yep. I, I need to go so, look that up because I totally forgot about that. It was, they were saying it was going to take like 18 months because that's the gestation period for elephants. elephants. But um, yeah, I forgot would about it. Would be a hybrid? Like is it, is it half and half like a, half elephant half woolly mammoth or no they just like inserted you know just like a, a pure dna just, yeah, yeah just like a no, uh replicating the individual not like a like a male female oh. zygote so whatever right yeah because it yeah there wasn't a, a woolly mammoth alive to impregnate the elephant so yeah, obviously they just yeah they just like inserted it and it was gonna i don't know but <laughs> I gotta go look that up because uh, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. That's interesting. It's gonna well, get pretty yeah. graphic here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I remember reading about that project uh, a little while ago too. So now I want to look it up. Yeah, it's just like here in New York, we've our our wolves were extirpated. You know, mid eighteen hundreds, maybe late eighteen hundreds, and just reintroduce yeah. them to the streets of Manhattan, man. Do it. I figure maybe take Let care run of some wild. rats. Wall <laughs> uh, uh, just see a wolf walking down. Uh, what is it like? One of the famous streets in New York. Wall Street. Yeah, well, the uh, coyotes are back. Great movie, by the way. Yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of uh, there's a in the Oregon. There's a lot of sightings of well, we have wolves now for sure, even in Western Oregon, uh, which mm. is pretty cool. But the new one is um. Oh my god, not badgers. What are they called? Wolverines. 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 Wolverines are showing up left and right. There's one like above Paradise of Mount Rainier. There's like a couple articles this week even about Wolverines in Western Oregon moving in. So are they returning or have they I, I'm assuming they're returning. Encroaching. I have no idea. I really like researched like they're native and they got kind of like booted out. Mm. So they're kind of like on the prowl, moving out, moving Interesting. in this direction. Yeah. Yeah, they're in the mountains that I backpack in in Wyoming, but I don't think I've seen one before. No. I've never. They're rare Pretty to rare. see. And those guys can run fast. Yeah. It's crazy how much ground they can cover. Yeah. Hugh Jackman's pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> I was so going there and I didn't want to say <laughs> Don't worry. I got you, Suzanne. I got you. <laughs> so what's next for you, Suzanne? What do you have? that you're looking forward to yeah, I've got a couple of uh, speaking engagements and stuff coming up so I'm doing a lot of prep for that but um, heading up to the Grand Canyon surprise surprise um, uh, in a week or so so I was you know, nice. spending a week up there which would be great and there will probably be a couple more trips since then um, and then probably out to White Sands and then I'm definitely going out to Caddo Lake again at the end of the year because that's just a, a really relaxing, wonderful place to be and take a group. You have some really nice photos from there too. I was. Uh... I really enjoyed that. I know it's it's a bit oversaturated, but for me, I just happen to enjoy the. Well, your project. stuff's really unique. Yeah. 
you had a really nice one of like some uh tree trunks with like a reflection that was like rippling yeah. that i sent to yeah that was another we one that i thought yeah. was a weird a weird outlier that it resonated with people so i was happy to see that you know it's always nice to know that i'm not going completely crazy <laughs> no not at all but i really i really enjoy it so i'm taking another group of friends out there and share that with them and uh, do a little bit more exploration um before and after as well so that nice. be good yeah when you go to the grand canyon where do you stay do you normally camp or do you usually i camp if it's if it's no. winter i have to stay in a hotel um yeah. and those hotel hotel costs are getting more and more um, but most of the time my car can, I have a forerunner and it's, okay. I have the back seats are out and it's just set up for camping 24 okay. seven so, adventure mobile. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got some, uh, KO two tires on that baby or. Yep, I do. <laughs> nice. I'm looking into getting some new tires for my Tacoma cause mine are wearing down. So old, I'm looking at those. It's an old 2003 and it almost has 300,000 miles on it. So oh yeah. Going strong. Going I'm strong. Still, yeah. Still hanging in there. Enjoying it. Yeah. Just nice. uh, drive it into the ground. Literally. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> drive it into the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, yeah, maybe I'll see yeah, you kind of like think about heading to Houston in the fall. So yeah, I'm thinking about heading down there in this fall as well. If uh, David Thompson goes back, I'm going to go with him. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll things, probably right? hit uh, hit Colorado fall color too. I have a friend of mine that I've been working with, and he hasn't been out to see Colorado fall color yet. So we'll probably do that, and that happens to be right after a certain person that's a friend of ours' wedding, um, which is the day Perfect before. Timing. So yeah, so we'll and we're halfway there, so we'll head up to. Uh, southwestern Colorado and do the fall colors up there. So that'll be good too. Great. That's awesome. Well, uh, any final words of advice for our listeners from a woman with as much life experience as yourself? Oh, geez. Life experience. That sounds scary. <laughs> <laughs> so just keep shooting and keep enjoying what you're doing and surround yourself by great photographers and enjoy life and drink beer. <laughs> cheers <laughs> we uh well we said. embody that one for sure <laughs> well cheers everybody thanks yeah, a lot for cheers. coming on suzanne cheers. that was really was awesome my pleasure thanks for inviting me thanks really for coming it. on suzanne cool. thank you